Hello, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. How are you all doing today? Happy Sunday. All right. Hi, Deji. Good evening. Any other person here with me? If you can hear me well, you can just say good evening or drop in the chat. Give me a thumbs up in the chat. Happy Sunday. <laughs> all right. Happy Sunday, everyone. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. All right. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not going to be wasting. I'm not going to. Today's session is going to be a very quick you know, quick and easy session just to introduce you to our platform, all right? So before we get started, I know quite a number of, it's Sunday, quite a number of, number of people are praying for tomorrow, you know, work day starts tomorrow again. So, you know, before we get started, let me, we're just 15 on the call, okay? So I'm just going to make it as, you know, um, as straightforward as possible, as easy to understand, as, direct, you know, I'll try to, Adding a little bit of practical, all right, but um, I may not be, I may not be able to, I may not have enough chance to go too practical, all right, because of the number of people that we have in session and so on and so forth. All right, but anyways, um, let me get to know where you are joining in from. Uh, so if you use the chat, let's use the chat to get to know one another, so we can I, I can easily tell you to your time, your your location where you are and so on and so forth so let me know where you're joining in from are you joining from lagos okay this is from lagos nigeria any other person where are you joining in from where are you joining this team from so i have lagos nigeria any other person akarolo chin where are you where are you? i carried you to know ben arthur and uh, jennifer jennifer's iphone <laughs> Kenneth. um who else is there let me see T, your player, me, Roxanne, Amsa. All right. Tanzania. We have Damilola from Tanzania. Amazing. Okay. We have uh, Ben Arthur from Accra, Ghana. We have um, quite a number of people from different parts of Africa, which is fantastic. We have Akerji from Lagos, Kingsley also from Lagos. All right. Quite a number of people from across Africa. Okay. So, which is not too bad. All right. So, our session today is going to be talking about our platform. So I'm just going to head to share my screen. So now, like I said, it's going to be a very, I want us to get to talk to one another so we can get to know more about Power Platform. Now, there is a career path people are sleeping on, and that is Power Platform. It's actually, this training program actually covers two essential areas, which is BI Developer. So there's a career path called BI Developer, and there's another career path called I'm just going to mute everyone so that people that are joining might not disturb us. All right. All right. So there is actually a career path called BI developer. So before I even go on, okay, let me get to show you. I like to show examples, okay, so that you would know exactly what I'm talking about. So a lot of people don't know this, okay. So I'm just going to go to a web, to a job site, and I'm going to search for BI developer. Okay. And you see quite a number of roles available at the moment. This is me in the UK, but there are quite a number of remote opportunities. Also, a lot of you know BI developer roles are coming up right now, and a lot of people don't understand that you know it's easy to learn and easy to transition into. All right, so you see BI developer, BI developer. There's also they also refer them. You can either use BI engineer or BI developer. So I'm not sure if this site uses BI engineer, sorry. So you can see BI engineer, BI engineer. I didn't want to spell it properly, but you can see BI engineer, data, not data engineer, but BI engineer. So there are quite a number of BI engineer or BI developer roles are available, all right? And these are the things that people are sleeping on at the moment, okay? So there's BI developer, and there's also power platform engineering. Now, these career parts are not the same. They are, you can, that's why the training program was designed to help you transition into either a BI developer or a power platform engineer. All right. So we're going to be talking more majorly on, we're going to be talking majorly on, just give me a second while I get my screen. So, okay. All right. So, so a lot of people, so the training program will cover, you know, the training program is going to cover BI development, okay, and power platform engineering. Okay, but for today's class, for what we're going to be discussing today, we're going to center majorly around power, uh, power platform engineering. That's what we're going to focus on today. Okay. So, um, so for 
for you guys that are just joining us for the first time, have you heard of Tenalytics before? Let me get to know if you're in it. For everyone in the chats, you can use the chat. If you've heard of Tenalytics before, put a yes in the chat. If you've never heard of Tenalytics before, put a no in the chat. So let me see the newcomers. All right. So, all right. So you've heard of no Sunday at Bejo as not. Okay. Uh, any other person? Okay. Kichuku also no, no. We have three no's. Don't worry. We have a special. We have a special seat for you at the uh, You know, the usher is going to take you to a special special seat. All the first comers, all the first comers in the house. We have a spe special seat, you know, arranged for you. So the ushers are going to take you there. And uh, we have uh, we have biscuits, we have um, fried rice, jollof rice for all the first timers in the house. Anyways, <laughs> all right. Let me just give you a brief about analytics and what we do. All right. Um, we are an educational technology firm and we help the whole essence of our existence is to get more Africans into tech. That's what we're doing. That's what we started, okay? Because even um, looking at we, based on our experience, myself and Adesa, founder and co-founder of Tenalytics, we looked at, you know, having gotten so much experience in, you know, the tech industry, okay? And having worked with quite a number of firms across the world, we noticed that there, we do not have a North Africa. There was no, not even within, there were very few Africans. You stumbled upon few Africans in tech. So we said, okay, do you know what? A lot of people don't have access to this, you know, don't have access to a structured learning approach to you, transitioning, to getting the way we transition. A lot of people don't understand how to make this transition also. And that's really what gave birth to Tenalytics. Now we offer training programs across different arrays of tech skills, from data analytics to business analysis, to data engineering, to power platform engineering that we're talking about today, you know, and so on and so forth. And, you know, we've done fantastically well through the way, through our approach to teaching people, to helping people transition, to gain that experience. So a lot of people want to transition, but, you know, they don't have that experience. They've never worked as, you know, a power platform engineer. They've never worked as a BI engineer. So how would they get this experience? How do they get this for a practical Hands on experience. And that's where we come in to use our approach of teaching, which is called, you know, which we like to call the experiential approach to learning. So you learn from practical case studies, industry relevant case studies that will be given to you to practice on in order for you to gain our experience and also build your, you know, your portfolios, you know, in whatever career path you choose. And we also leverage experienced professionals, people that have, you know, quite a number of experience, you know, people coming from Apple, KPMG, Google, PNG, Google, so on and so forth. And we leverage these people's experience to help you transition into your desired career path, such career paths, okay? So that's what we do. And, you know, just a little bit of, you know, bragging rights, you get me? All right, we did over 300 last year transitioning and now the key thing you should know about these 300 people it's not people that were working you know either in it or so these are people that had no experience in tech at all all right so and that's why we are very very finicky about this number to tell you that you know you don't need any prior experience to transition into tech because last year we did 300 people we looked at it and we're like you know this is fantastic this is a huge number that we can actually achieve to get people into tech. And not, this is not just in Africa. This is for people in the UK, people in Ireland, people across you know, Europe, you know, in Canada, in the US. You know, this 300 covers you know, majority of those places that I mentioned already, all right? So we people transition from having no even work experience. We had people that were bakers. We had people that were working, you know, entrepreneurs working solely for themselves. And they were able to transition into their first role as, you know, a tech bro or a tech sales, you know, understand. So this is what we did last year, 300. And we said, okay, do you know what? We need to do more this year to get more people into the tech space. I mean, there was, I will tell, I will share my own personal experience on how I met someone we trained in analytics in a job I started. I started the role. I did a particular onboarding meeting. I did a session, okay, for major stakeholders within the business. And guess who chatted me up? A previous analytics alumni was working as a business analyst in that same organization. I was, I was so like, you know how, how do you know, do you know how um, 
how hard it was to see an African in tech before. And now we have someone that went through analytics working as a business analyst in that same organization. So that's one of the joy whereby wherever you go to, you meet a Nigerian, you meet a Ghanaian, you meet an African, all right? That you can easily say, oh, how far are you there? Do you understand? You have no idea how sweet and easy life will be when we can work together, you know? And that's what we're trying to push. That's the narrative we're trying to push to people to get people into the tech environment, all right? So still talking about a bragging right on, um, you know, what we did last year, okay? So you can see, you know, when you're doing well, people start to write about, you know, the, the things that you're doing. So Business Day wrote about us, about what we did. Analytics helps Africans across four continent land tech jobs. This is what, coming from the words of, you know, people at Business Day. You know, Narometrics also said, one million of programs with analytics, most are designed, um, sponsored data analytics at the time. So we, we, we hold, you know, community events whereby we help yeah, then I'm more experienced. So if you're looking to get more experience, run data analytics at a time that you can put in your CV and people win cash awards also. So that's where you get the one million from. So you can see, you know, we're featured on the punch also. Nigeria needs to make data-driven decisions to analytics. Uh, you can see also about the Akaton, Vanguard also carried it. Business Day also carried the Akaton. So it was a very, it's the largest and the biggest data analytics Akaton has happened in Africa. So it's something that we hold to a very large, you know, to a large estimate. All right. Um, Okay, so also PR Fire based in the UK, yeah, uh, based in the UK, you know, took also, you know, capture the cap the sort of wind of what we are doing. All right. And they said analytics to reiterate commitment to help Africans get tech jobs in Europe. So these are you know the key things that we are doing. And you know, people are getting we are getting recognized for it. Okay. And that's what we like to tell people that see, these things are possible. All right, these things are possible. People tell you it's difficult to get into tech. A lot of people, a lot of people say a lot of things online about transitioning to tech, and you know they never tell you how to transition, but they'll tell you how it is difficult, but they'll never tell you how it is easy to transition. Obviously, it requires a little bit of commitment, a little bit of reading, you know, a little bit of studying. All right. But, you know, who would you follow? Someone that tells you it is possible and someone that tells you it is difficult, it is hard, and so on and so forth. But anyways, we're going to be talking about, we're still going to be demystifying some of the, you know, notion that you need to do so many things in order for you to transition into tech. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So this was our last hackathon that happened, you know, uh, just a couple of months ago, okay? Uh, you know, we got some of the top guys in the industry co to come and validate what our participants were sharing. So it was an hackathon, data analytics hackathon. A case study was presented and, you know, people had time to do the analysis, visualization and data storytelling. So we had Michelle Conway, which is the lead data scientist with Lloyds Bank here in the UK. She was one of the panelists. We had Sadiq Akintola working with Google, also one of the panelists. So there's Bastian Obeta, which is, is currently, you know, one of the AI research lead with um, Cambridge University here in the UK. And we have Olamide Jola, Jola Osho, who is currently the head of data analytics and insight with Wema Bank Nigeria. So you see, we work with some of the greatest, you know, greatest minds in the industry, not just in Nigeria, not just in Africa, but across the world itself. And those are the things that we bring to bear to help you transition into tech. All right. So some of our participants, where are they working now? We have quite a number of them working across different institutions now across the world. Okay. This is just a few of them. Trust me, this is just a few of them. All right. And, um, you know, putting across, like I said, Africa, Europe, Asia, Middle East, you know, and so on, North America, America, and, you know, across the world itself. So we have people transitioning everywhere. So regardless of your location, regardless of anything that you're going through or anywhere you are, trust me, you are in the right place to transition into tech. Now, who is this person that is talking to you that is just rambling for the last, you know, 14, 15 minutes now, okay? <laughs> My name is Efimena April. I'm the co-founder of Analytics, and uh, I have close, well, close to it, a decade experience in the data space. Now, the good thing about my own experience is, and I did start from, I didn't double and like, I didn't find myself in data, all right? I found myself, I actually transitioned. So I studied economics, 
So if you, if you studied economics or you studied business or you studied accounting, you know, you can actually transition into tech. Because I did economics for my first degree and uh, I used to work as a management consultant. So as a consultant, I really didn't do too much of data, okay? Even though we did a little bit of data back then, it wasn't core data. It wasn't, I won't classify it as tech, do you understand? So, but I wanted that tech experience because looking at the line and to be very fair and to be very honest, it was because of the money, okay, that was in tech, all right? You know, said tech was a new oil, data was a new oil, you know, the next career part in the future, sexiest, sexiest job of the future, you know, so on and so forth. And that was really what, you know, get me geared up into transitioning into tech and eventually I transitioned into tech. Yes, it took me a couple of, it took me over, you know, learning and everything it took me over a year. Okay, but you know, it wasn't supposed to be up to a year, to be very honest. It's because there was no structure to learn, there was no structured approach to learning back then. There was no place I could say, Oh, learn this one first, learn this next, learn this next. So there was no structure. So I was re learning avasadly. Do you understand? Today I'm learning Excel, tomorrow I'm learning Python, the next day I'm learning MongoDB. I can remember the time I heard about no SQL. Okay, I dropped everything I was learning. I started learning no SQL. I spent another three months on no SQL. Okay, before I noticed that, did you know what else? I've never even finished learning the normal SQL. I'm not learning no SQL. Do you understand? And these were the things that people will not tell you. They'll tell you to go and watch a video on YouTube, but you you feel confused after a couple of videos. What next? What's the next thing to learn after I finish this? And I see a lot of people reaching out to me to say this, and that's the one like part of the reasons why. We actually started analytics to help people transition efficiently into tech under the shortest period of time. All right. So, anyways, what are we going to be talking about today? Okay. All right. What are we going to be talking about today? It's very simple. All right. We're going to be discussing quite a number of activities. Okay. And the first of them is get to understand why there is a demand for AI developers or and also power platform engineers. Why is there a demand for these people? All right. You know, the first thing I showed you was a job site. You know, let me just bring it up for people who are just joining. All right. So we have what we call BIA developers. All right. Sorry, not a Z. It's supposed to be developer. It's just developer. So we have a lot of, this is, I'm based in the UK. So this is a UK site. This is just one of the sites in the UK. So if you're in Germany, use a site in Germany. If you're in Italy, you're in Accra, you're in Nigeria, just search for be a developer. And, you know, I'll show you some places where you can get remote roles, remote, purely remote position. So regardless, you're in Nigeria, you're in Ghana, you're in, you know, you're in Tanzania. <laughs> you would be able to get remote opportunities. So just this is just one site, and you can see all the BI developer roles that are available, okay? All the BI developer roles that are available. So you also have power platform. You also have what? Power, and you can see this. This is 40 to 50,000 pounds. This is 30 to 45, 35 to 45, 35 to 40. 30, this is per annum, okay? 35 to 45 pounds per annum. And you can see these are, you know, well-paid jobs. And we also have power platform. We also have Power Platform. So you can see these are actual jobs, okay? Power Platform Developer, Power Platform Developer, Power Platform Manager, Power Platform Manager, Power Platform Evangelist, Power Platform Developer. And you see this row 50 to 60, 36 to 41, 70 to 80, 36 to 41. So different rules, different pays, you know, you know the one that you go for, all right? So you see these rules exist, but a lot of people don't know that these rules exist. And, you know, a lot of people don't even have the skill sets to classify as a power platform developer, okay? And it's easy. It's one of the easiest career paths. And do you know why it's one of the easiest career paths? It's because you require no coding. No coding, no mathematics, no statistics, nothing for you to get started in this career path. Now, a lot of people will say, you know, it's, you know, I don't want to say what people say, okay? Let's talk about the possibilities and the opportunities in this career part, all right? So we're going to be talking about the pathway to becoming a BI slash Power Platform Engineer. And the key thing is you securing the job after the training program, because that's what we want you to do. We want you to secure a job, all right? Not keep searching, not keep, you know, keep looking for a job. We want you to secure that job. And I'm going to be discussing so to become the BI engineer or slash power platform engineer and securing a job. 
Now, also I'll discuss remote full-time and tech relocation opportunities. So a lot of you that are looking to relocate, um, they, you don't want to do, you don't want to do a master's, you don't want to do any studying and all that. You just want to go travel out, you know, because of work, because of the skills that you have, you want to relocate to a new country. I'm going to be talking about this also briefly as we go on. Now, if you wait to the end of the session, you wait to the end of the session, I have a special offer for you. Special offer, packaged offer, sweet, delicious offer. I have awaited for you. And the last but not the least is the Tenalytics Growth Internship Program. Tenalytics Growth Internship Program. Now, this Growth Internship Program is one of the reasons we have quite a number of high performance in terms of people getting jobs from our training program. And I'm going to explain it to you now. Only people that wait to the end of the session will hear about the growth, the, the special offer, and also hear about the growth internship program. So two things, when you wait to the end of the session, you get to hear about the special offer and you get to hear about the growth internship program. All right, so wait till the end of the session and you get to learn about this very, very critical parts of our session today. Now, <clears throat> let me hear from you guys. Have you guys heard of Power Platform? Have you guys, have you, has anybody heard of Power Platform before? Have you heard of Power Platform? Let's use the chat. I'm going to be using the chat a lot. So let's use the chat. Have you heard of Power Platform? Use the chat. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. No. Maume. Maume. If I'm correct, sorry. No, please. No, please. This is my first time. Or um, Molulua said yes. No, 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 no. I'm hearing about it for the first time. Fantastic. That's why we're here. Okay. So quite a number of opportunities you can tell. If you just look at the charts, you see a lot of people don't even know what Power Platform is. Okay. A lot of people don't know. And it's one of the sweetest career paths you can take. Now, let me tell you something. All right. Let, let's start the session. Okay. Now, a lot of people don't know Power Platform, but do you know Power BI? Let me see. Let me test this one now. Have you heard of Power BI? Let me see this now. <laughs> have you heard of Power BI? So I have one. Okay, yes. I think Mavelo says no. Sunday says no. Interesting. So I have two no's. I have three no's. Miss Stella said no also. Not at all. I know Power BI. Okay, no. So we have quite a number of people that don't even know Power BI. Okay, which is not bad. Nancy, I would want you to use the chat. Just put it in the chat so we can discuss faster. It's more easier using the chat. Okay, so I have a lot of no's, not at all. Okay, fantastic. I have also not at all. So Power BI, okay, is an analytical tool. Okay, so we use Power BI for analytics. All right, we use Power BI for analytics. So a lot of people know Power BI. A lot of people run to learn Power BI. Now, I'll be doing this side by side just to show you the opportunities you have, okay? I'm not gonna be holding any information. I'm gonna be telling you as it is, all right? So Power BI, just learning Power BI alone gives you a lot of opportunity in the analytical space, all right? So for business analytics, for analytics, BI, business intelligence, and so on, all right? So Power BI on its own, on its own, as a tool on its own, gives you a lot of opportunities. It gives you a whole lot of opportunities, all right? And I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna go back to the job site and I'm gonna show you Power Plan, just Power BI. So we have what we call a Power BI developer. Just say, I'm just gonna search for Power BI, okay? So you see Power BI developer, 85,000 pounds. This is all I know how to use, just Power BI. Nothing more, nothing less, Power BI. Power BI under this 50 to 58. Power BI developer 35 to 50. Power BI developer 400 to 500 pounds per day. This is a contract position, all right? So this one, contractors in the UK naturally get paid more, all right? This is 400 to 500 pounds. Power BI developer, Power BI, you see, just Power BI, just Power BI alone, which is an analytical tool, you can actually start to earn considerably higher than anybody within your peer, all right? Just by you learning just Power BI. Now, this is just one. This is just one tool inside the Power BI. Just one inside Power Platform. So we have the Power Platform. So you notice all of them have a keyword, which is power. All right. So you see the Power BI. You see another one here, Power Apps. You see another one here, Power Automate. You see another one here, Power Virtual Agents. 
Now, everything has power, 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 power. Okay, that's where it's coming from, the power platform. Okay, so a lot of people struggle, not, not struggle, but a lot of people focus too much on Power BI. Okay, and say that, okay, do you know what? I want to be an expert in Power BI, which is fantastic. There's a career path just for Power BI, which is fantastic, which is good. But now, you, know, you have other applications inside the Power Platform, which is also fantastic. You're a big boy going by salary scale. <laughs> I want to be like, I want to, don't worry, it's fine. There are so many opportunities, trust me, IODG. All right? So looking at Power Apps, looking at Power Apps, Power Apps is for application development. So um, that's all, that's part of the things that we're going to be looking at today. I'm going to just show you, all right? I'm not going to go into too practical. I'm just going to show you how it works, okay? And why this design high demand, okay? So I'm going to be talking about application development. Power Apps is for you to build applications. Now, organizations don't want to see, Majority of the organizations, you know, are using Microsoft already. Majority of the organizations across the world already have Microsoft. So you see Microsoft PowerPoint, Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, you know, you know, have all these Microsoft tools, you're using Teams, you're using SharePoint, you're using all these organizations are using Microsoft already, one way or the other. All right. So rather than them paying extra money to a software developer to build applications for the business, all right, what would they do? They would hire a Power Apps developer. They would hire a Power Apps developer. Now, let me show you again. Power App alone. I'm just going to go here again and look for Power App. Because I'm. this is this is just Power App alone. All right? Now, you would see everything. Power Apps developer, M64 application support developer, data architect, and so on and so forth. So you see all this technology by itself can survive by, you know, can stand alone as a skill set on its own. So you have the Power Power Apps developer and it's used for applications, mobile applications and, you know, um, mobile, majorly mobile applications and system applications. So the ones that run on your system, the ones that run on your mobile, you can develop those kinds of applications. And I'm gonna show you some of them as we go on, all right? Now you ask Power Automate, okay? Power Automate for process automation. So if you go to the office and you notice that you're doing things, almost the things repeatedly, okay? Repeatedly on a daily basis. So you go to office, you are always downloading emails. You are always, you know, moving files from one place to the other. You know, somebody is sending you a request. I want to go and leave. I want to request for, you know, store requisition. You know, people, there are so many manual things that happen within the organization. Now, Power Automate allows you to automate such kinds of processes, all right? Such kinds of processes. So anything within your organization that is repetitive, like is repetitive in the sense that you, every week you have to do it, every day you have to do it, every month it has to be done. A report, it might be a report, it might be anything within the organization. Power Automate allows you to automate those kinds of tasks, okay? Now, the last but not the least is Power Virtual Agent. Okay, now this one is building what? Intelligent virtual agent. Now, if you are a customer facing organization, all right, so rather than you hiring sales team, rather than you hiring more salespeople within your organization, you can build an AI enabled passport. All right, you can build an AI enabled Passport that would allow you to convert, you know, uh, allow your business or allow allow the virtual agent to have conversations with your customer. All right. So if your customer reaches out because of a particular complaint, so rather than a human, you know, answering that particular complaint, you have a virtual agent that is responding. And the person, the customer will not know that it's a virtual agent. It will feel like it's actually chatting with a human, but it's an agent. It's an automated. It's a it's an AI enabled chatbot that would be responding. So organizations are looking for someone that has the skills called Power Platform. And that's why they call it the Power Platform Engineer because you are building applications, all right? You are automating business processes, you are building virtual agents, and you are also building analytics within the organization. So you're combining these skill sets together in order for you to build lasting solutions for the business. 
Now, the key thing, the beauty about this career path is low code. You are not coding, all right? The low code platform that spans Office 365, Azure, Dynamics 365, and standalone application, no code, all right? So coding zero, okay? Zero or at the minimal list, the minimal, like very, very minimal, no coding. So it's majorly gonna be drag and drop. So a lot of, I can see a lot of people in the chat say, you must be earning, you must be a big boy. See, it didn't start today, all right? It didn't start overnight. Like I said, that's why I shared my own personal experience we spent over a year trying to transition into tech. And that's the reason why we started analytics to see how we can reduce it for people where we can you can learn in a structured approach in order for you to get into tech, all right? So that's what we're gonna be talking about today, okay? That's what we're gonna be talking about and I'll show you the opportunities because a lot of people will not show you this. A lot of people just say you come and end, but we want you guys to get jobs. We want you to earn more. I want to enter into a new company and I get to see somebody. I want to see an African. I want to see, you know, someone from Ghana and I'm saying Chade Alpha. Do you understand? I want to go to, you know, I want to see people. I want to meet with other Africans in town rather than just Europeans and Americans and, you know, people from, you know, the white people, Chinese and the rest of them taking all the tech jobs. I want Africans also to be taking these roles because I know it's absolutely possible. And that's the reason why we're here today to talk about these opportunities and not just the opportunity and also to explain to you why these things are in high demand. So a lot of people focus on Power BI, okay? A lot of people focus on Power BI, but you can actually learn all of them in the Power Platform. So it's not just a standalone tool, all right? It's you combining all of them together in order for you to build lasting applications for the business, all right? So we're going to be talking majorly today around Power BI, Power Automate, and Power Apps, all right? So I'll be talking about three of them, okay? I'll be doing a practical uh, majorly on Power BI and Power Automate. Just a very brief power, just a very brief, you know, practical. We can get to see, you know, how dynamic, you know, a power platform engineer can actually work. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so we're going to be going straight into the hands of practical session. Like I said, you might not be able to practice along with me because you don't, you might not have some of these applications running on your system. You can have them. Okay, it's just we don't have enough time to walk you through, you know, installation and all that. But, anyways, we'll, I'll just give you through to it. All right. So let me ask this question now. Let me open up. How do you request for leave? At your organization or in your organization, how do you request for for leave? So you're going on leave in your organization. How do you request for it? Let me see. So do you do you write it on a piece of paper? Put it under the HR. I know the one of my <laughs> one of my friends back then. Anytime they're going on leave, you have to type it out. You know, print it and drop it under the drop it on the desk, the HR person's desk, and all that. So how do you request for leave in your organization? How do you do that? Send an email to your immediate supervisor for approval. Fantastic. Grab you, that's true email, true email. That's okay. All right. So there's an HRI system that staff have personal logs, detailed. Fantastic. Mary, that's also a very fantastic one. So you see, they have to buy applications. They have to pay for applications. All right, send an email to request for leave. Google link is sent to us. Uh, field download and send to HR. Fantastic, through email. So you see a lot of these processes are very manual. Majority of this organization, even outside the country, it's still very manual, okay? So I'm going to show you a process that we can develop. I can see somebody say, fill a leave form, which is very good. It's still a leave form. It's also very, it's a good way of tracking people that have gone on leave and people that have not gone on leave, all right? But if you send an email, it's very likely that this thing will be lost in transit, all right? It's very, very, it's very easy that this thing will be lost in, I'm coming, let me just close the window. I have, I'm hearing a lot of noise down here. It's some by everybody's outside on team and all that. So all right. So um, so you see, even email is not is not preferred. Okay. And even if you're using a form, even if you're using a form, a Google form or whatever it is, 
still not very efficient because you know it's we need to add some extra features to it to make it dynamic and you know very wonderful to work with. All right, so we have a lot of people sending emails, fill out the HR form and submit it to your supervisor. You know, these are all, you know, uh, the noise is actually not coming through. Oh, okay. Interesting, okay. All right, so, you know, all these systems are built, you know, very manual, mundane processes within the organization. So as a power platform developer, okay, that's where you come in to see how you can automate these processes, how you can automate these processes. So we're going to be working with Four things today, okay? We're going to be working with four things. And you see how easy it is to communicate, to build a solution, okay? An automated solution, not, mm, not a very not a very sweet, I used to really say sweet, sweet, very sweet automated process for me. You are going to leave, all right? So we're going to be using Excel, okay? We're going to be using Microsoft Forms. We're going to be using what we call data flows. And we're going to be using Power BI Desktop for reporting. So the HR person, the, the head of HR or the CEO, or you know, see the people in the management team, they don't need to be looking at Google Form or Excel. How many people have gone on leave? You know, there's no reporting. So I want to also build a reporting side of that soon. So that when people go and leave, okay, it's easy for me to just go on Power BI, you know, and you know, and look at the people I'm going on leave, how many days they've gone on leave track all these key metrics within the organization. So I'm going to be using, you know, Power BI, and I'm going to be automating it also. I'll be automating it, and I'm going to explain how you can use Power Automate to automate the whole process of this particular application. So I'm going to be doing a leave tracker automation, okay? Leave tracker automation. Now, if you have systems within your organization, apps, okay, you're using an HRIS system, it means, the organization has gone out of its way to pay for an application, to pay for, like they're paying extra fee in order for them to use the application to track what, to track people that are going on leave. Meanwhile, you can build using the tools within the organization, within these tools already existing in the organization. And that's where Power Platform comes in because organizations are seeing that, why do we need to go and pay extra for SAP? or HRIS system for Zoho Analytics, where we can build lasting solutions with applications within the organization already. Essentially, that's what we are talking about using Power Platform. So and, uh, I would also show you something else for IT support. If you have IT support, your laptop is bad, your laptop has gone bad, you want to send a request, how do you send a request? You can also build an application, okay? You can also build an application. So I have Kingsley that would also walk us through you know, an IT, you know, application that you can build to the organization and people can request for a new laptop. They can log in complaints about certain IT issues and things are reported, same things are stored, things are cracked within the organization. So those are the things that we're looking at today. So I'm not going to waste too much time. I'm just going to work you through the project. projects. Like I said, it's going to be a very you know, easy one to work with, okay? Because you're not downloading, you're not installing, you're just walking you through projects, okay? So I'm just, let me just um, open a browser, okay? So I'm gonna open a browser and I'm gonna be using office.com because everything I'm using is in Microsoft. So everything I'm gonna be using today is Microsoft. Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Forms, Microsoft, this is data flows. Data flows is a part of Power BI desktop. Power BI is a part of Power BI. So I'll show you how to use it. And this is basically, everything is Microsoft. Every single thing is Microsoft. And if you're using Microsoft in your organization, there's no need for you to go and buy or pay for another application in order for you to track certain things within your organization. All right. So I'm going to go to Office 365 and I will start off with Excel. Like I said, with the flow of the work that we have in here, with the flow we're starting with, Microsoft Excel. We're well, starting with Microsoft Excel. So Excel is going to be our database, okay? It's going to act as our database, okay? It's going to act as our database. It's not, it's not the best, but for the community that we're building, it's a very quick and better solution, all right? Excel is going to act as our database, okay? Now, I'm going to give it a name, okay? I'm just going to give it a name. I'm going to give it a name. Say, leave 
analytics, I'm going to call it analytics. The analytics, okay, read Parker, okay. <clears throat> All right, analytics leave tracker. Insert, you need to insert the form. Now, hmm. you could have inserted the form directly from Microsoft, go to Microsoft and inserted it from Microsoft Forms directly. But it's best is for you to build an automated system that will be tracked easily, build it for using Microsoft, going through Excel. Then insert, click on insert, then insert the form, the new form. This is still the same thing as the Microsoft form. All right. So I'm going to click on new form. Okay. And you see, the leaf tracker. Okay. The analytics leaf tracker. I don't know where the one came from. So I'll change it. I'll just update it. Leaf tracker. All right. <clears throat> I'll change it. This one will not be continuous. Okay. And that's it. So you could see I have the ID, that's the, the form ID. So when you fill a form, the unique identifier is provided to the form. The start time, when you start to fill in the form, completion time, the email, that's your email, and your name is collected automat automatically. All right. Mm -hmm. So instead of form one, I'm going to rename it. I'm going to read from, from one, I'm going to rename it to leave. Okay, I'm going to open it up. Okay. So for this, I want, because I'm building a solution that I want to give you guys permission to open. So I want you guys to request for your leave. Do you understand? I want you guys to request for your leave so we can track it together. Okay. So I'm going to collect responses, but I'll collect responses from outside the organization. Okay. Sorry. Mm. So collect responses, anyone can respond, anyone. So I'll take it from only people within the organization. So if you're doing something for your organization, you would leave it at this. You will leave it as only people inside your organization should be able to fill the form. Anybody from external would not be able to fill the form. But because I'm building a solution that we can easily track together, I'm just going to, anyone can respond. I'm going to leave it as anyone can respond, okay? So now let's add questions. Let's add questions, okay? So the first thing I'm going to add is a text, okay? I'm going to add a text. Now this text would be full name. I'm going to ask you to put in your full name, okay? Full name, all right? So I will, it's required. So you have to put in your full name. It's required that you give your, when you're booking your leave, you need to put in your full name, all right? Another thing I would look for is, let's say, employee ID, everybody should have a staff, maybe staff ID. Okay, so I'm gonna take another text and I'm gonna take employee staff ID actually. So I need to get your staff ID. So it's required also. So what else do you think we should request for? What else do you think we should request for? I'm gonna take department. I'm gonna take department. Your department or departments. Please indicate your department. So what department should we be looking at? Can anybody give me, I, you know, give me some departments that you can work with? What department should we be looking at? So let me say, if you work with um, the HR department, okay, let's say finance. So is there any department we should track? <laughs> the ICT, yes, ICT. So you're working in the ICT department, you're working in communications, Okay, communications, you're working in sales. I love this, I love this. You're working in sales. Okay, what else? We have um, legal, okay. All right, do you know what I'm just gonna do? I'm just gonna put, okay, um, okay, accounting, accounting. I see, I see a lot of accounting, so I'll just take accounting. But that's under finance, okay? Let me just take um, operations. I'll take operations rather. Okay, so finance and accounting. Let me just move finance and accounting. Okay, finance and accounting. HR, finance and accounting, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so another thing is somebody said the name of the supervisor. You need to state the name of your supervisor. Okay, name of supervisor. 
name of supervisor, okay? What else? The name of your supervisor, type of leave, then take choice for type of leave, type of leave. All right, so type of leave. What's the type of leave we have? I know we have sick leave. I know we have an exam. What's the type of leave again that we have? What kind of leave? Maternity, maternity or paternity? Paternity, slash paternity. Paternity, okay. What else is there? Duration leave. I'm not sure I've heard of duration leave, but casual leave, I think I've heard of casual. Okay, or uh, let's say annual. I don't know what is the same thing or oh, annual. Okay, casual study. I have studied it already. That's exam or oh, let's say exams are study leave. Okay, um, sabbatical. I think I know that also sabbatical. Okay, do you know what I'm just going to put? I'm going to put order, order. So if it's anything else, please just state it there. The same thing with the department. I may not capture everything in the in the department, so I'm going to select order and order. So if you're not in HR, you're not in ICT, and all those one, please put your own put it there. Okay. The same thing with the type of leave. You know, if it's not sick, it's not exam, it's not maternity, annual, sabbatical. Please put your own leave there. Okay. Now the part I want, the next thing I want is the next thing I want is add new. I'm going to add a date. So the start date for the leave, the start date, okay? The start date, and I'm gonna also take another date for the end date, okay? End date, okay? And last but not the least is text the details about your leave, details about your leave. Details about your leave, and I will just, I'll leave it like that, okay? I will leave it that way. Okay, so I've saved it, okay, I saved it. I'm gonna collect responses and I want you guys to fill in your leave request. Now I'll approve it, okay? All right, so anyone can respond. I'm gonna shorten the URL so it's easy for you to just work with. So I've copied it. I'm gonna paste it in the chat. I'm gonna paste it in the chat and I want you guys to request for your leave. I'll give you five minutes to request for your leave. Request for your leave. So I'll give you about five, 10 minutes to request for your leave. So uh, let me see. Let me see if people are filling the form already. So so everything is here. You know, the start time, completion time, email, phone number, you know, and um, everything else. Okay. Oh, I didn't put, I didn't get the person's email. So I don't think the person, your email is there. So let me just. I don't need it, don't worry, it's fine. It's not, it's not, it's not, we're not building something that would be deploying or anything like that. So let's put in random data. It doesn't have to be anything. I've dropped the form, the link to the form on the website, on the chat. So just go to the chat, you'll see the link. I'll send the link to the form. So please guys request for your leave. I want you guys to request for your leave and let's build. So we have somebody, Hanko has requested. <laughs> The tank was requested ICT department to go and join, okay? Annual leave, okay, between the 6th of, um, that's November. Okay, that's June, sorry. Okay, so maternity leave, we have study leave. So I want you guys to feel, keep feeling, keep feeling, keep feeling, okay? Keep feeling. Then we're going to automate the whole process. You see, we're still going to automate the process, okay? <clears throat> so, Keep feeling, keep feeling, keep feeling, keep feeling. All right. I'm going to bus. Someone is going to bus one, uh, Mr. Biggs. <laughs> All right. I, I think I'm, I'm liking some of the responses I'm seeing here. All right. So anyways, you can feel it. Feel it. I'll just give you one minute more. Then I'll continue with the session. Okay. So please just keep feeling it. Keep feeling the phone. All right. I'm just random information. It, it doesn't have to be accurate. Just put in anything you want, to be honest. Just put in. Have fun with the numbering, okay? We're putting away up in that. All right. If you may is a supervisor, who is this Francis? <laughs> I have to if you may not. People choosing me as supervisors. Interesting. All right. Fantastic. So I'm not going to waste too much time. You can see as you're filling the form, everything has been recorded over here. Every single thing is recorded over here. All right. So what I'm going to do now is, you know, I request on a daily basis. So I would want to, Automate process, okay? 
the analytics reporting, okay? I want to automate it, easily peasy, easy peasy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to Power BI. I'm gonna to go to Microsoft Office. I'm gonna to go to Office, my own page. I'm gonna to go to Power BI, all right? I'm gonna to go to Power BI, all right? And in Power BI, we have a workspace. I'm gonna create a workspace, okay? These are the things that you would do. A workspace basically allows you to work better with people, okay? Allows you to work better with your team members, so on and so forth. So I'm going to go to workspace and I'm going to add a new workspace. This new workspace would be 10 analytics leave tracker. Okay. Then I leave it, then analytics leave tracker. And I'm going to click on apply. All right. Now to automate this process of data refreshing, okay, because people can request, you can have like if you're working in a very large organization, people can request almost at the same time. All right, so what I want to do is I want to use Power BI to automatically, you know, refresh or maybe depending, maybe I don't want it to automatically refresh every time somebody feels it. Maybe I want to track it at a certain time during the day, okay? So I want to be able to track it at a certain time during the day. So if you want it to be real time, you can use its streaming data sets, okay? So this, your analytics, this form here, you can actually, you can actually be streaming real time. So when somebody, those are air to feed it, you would see it is streaming real time. This is a streaming data set, meaning that you're looking at it near real time, if not real time. Okay. But that's not what we're going to be doing today. We're going to just take it in one step, easy, make it very simple and straightforward. So we're going to be working with a data flow. All right. So I'm going to click on data flow. Okay. I'm going to click on data flow. Define a new table. I'm going to be adding a new table. So this data set you have here, it's a table, okay, that we're gonna add it, okay? So add new table, all right? <clears throat> so choose data source, okay? Currently, and that's why we're using Excel as our database. So anytime you request for a relief, it comes into this particular source, into this place here. So what we're gonna do, this Excel is our data source, okay? So Excel, this Excel here, Excel workbook, is the data source. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to browse OneDrive because my Excel, this Excel online is stored on my OneDrive. Okay. So I'm going to click on OneDrive, browse OneDrive, and I'm going to look for 10 analytics tracker, leave tracker 2023. Okay. 10 analytics leave tracker 2023. So I'll click on it and I'll click on select. All right. <clears throat> And once I'm done with that, I'm going to click on next. Okay. Like I said, I'm just showing you, this is, you know, an approach to go through. New tracker. This is the file. Okay. So if I come here, you see the name of the tab is called leave tracker. The name of the tab is called leave tracker. And I'm going to use power data flow. So currently I'm using the data flow to automate the process of cleaning the data, data exploration, so on and so forth. So we have the leaf tracker and I'm going to click on transform data. I'm going to click on transform data, okay? All right, so you see the data that was in Excel, okay? Is now in, uh, is now in my data flow. The data that was in Excel, okay? Currently now exists in data flows, in Power BI data flows, all right? So we have everything there. So we can see everybody, Oguna, John, AK, if you men and Mr. Biggs, every data that was filled currently now exists in my data flow. I'm not going to be doing too much because it's just a very simple system. I'm not going to waste too much of your time. So I'm just going to click on save and close. I'm going to click on save and close. All right. So it's going to validate and do what the face it needs to do. Okay. So the name of the data flow, I'm going to call it um, analytics. Leave, leave 2023, okay? All right, and if you want to have a description, tell the story about what the data flow is doing, fine and good, and I'm gonna click on okay. All right, I'm gonna click on okay. Now you see, your data flow has been saved. To keep your data up to date, you need to set a refresh. So I've set a refresh. They're telling me to set up a refresh. What would I do? I would also do what? I would set up a refresh and you can see this, okay? And I will just 
click on the data flow and I would, I'll show you how to refresh it. Very easy to work with, very easy to do. So if I go back to the analytics, you see this is the data flow I just created. The analytics leave 2023, this is the data flow. All right, so you see the type here. Type here is data flow. Type here is data flow. So in order for me to schedule refresh, okay? I don't know which one is correct, Shed to schedule. Schedule sounds, I don't know, schedule is what I use most times. So to schedule the refresh, okay? You see it here, schedule refresh, okay? So <clears throat> in order for me, you see refresh here, I will turn it on. I'll turn it on. So if I want to refresh daily, so I want it to refresh daily, okay? Daily, if it's weekly, fine. If it, but obviously people can request, every, people request every day. All right, so maybe let's take for example, I'm gonna add a time. So when I get to work in the morning, what time do you resume? You resume, let's say seven, you resume eight o'clock. Everybody resumes eight o'clock. So I want it to resume, I want it to refresh before I start work every day. So 7.30. So by 7.30 is refresh. Now, when I get to work at eight o'clock, the data will be as up to date as 7.30, okay? Let's say, some few hours into the day, maybe let's say by, let's say by 10, 10 o'clock in the morning, it refreshes again, okay? Then by maybe like two o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the afternoon, 2 p.m. And before I go home in the evening, let's say by 4.30 or five o'clock, let's say five o'clock, five o'clock p.m. So I have four times, okay? I can add more time if I want to, all right? So you have four times 7 30 10 o'clock in the morning two o'clock and five o'clock so i don't i don't need the real time all right so when you request for a leave one time or the other i will capture it in one of the refresh i do during the day so my data is refreshed on this daily basis on a daily basis so i'm going to apply it okay i'm going to apply it okay i'm going to apply it and that's done that's me automating the data refresh okay now, the reporting side of things, the reporting, okay? Because the head of data, does he understand all this nonsense we just did? Pardon my English, yeah? But don't you understand all these things that we have done, all this, all this formatting and all this moving data and all these forms and I don't understand this. And that's why, you know, executives within the organizations are looking for people that can communicate analytically you know, without sounding too technical, okay? Without you writing programming languages, without you using Python, something that is straight to the point, easy to use, easy, easy to deploy within the business. That is why they are looking for Power Platform developers, okay? So now I'm going to, I'm just going to open Power BI and I'm going to show you how easy it is to work with what we call data flow. So this is Power BI, all right? So I don't have data currently in my Power BI. You see here, you, I haven't loaded any data yet, okay? So there's no data in Power BI just now, just yet. But we have a data flow. We have this data flow. We have this data flow. Now, the beauty of this data flow is, and that's where BI engineering comes in, especially Power BI engineering, Power BI development, okay? Power BI developer. Because of this data flow that has created, can anybody within the organization, not just HR, if there is any other person, any other person within the organization that needs this data set, we can easily access this data set. So let's say finance needs it to calculate your leave allowance or your needs or your dad. All right, this data set can be provided to them immediately. They request for, oh, I want to see the leaves, and you know, people are going to leave and all that. It can also just be sent to person in finance or accounting or any other person that needs this information. So if you're using IT support, you're doing uh, whatever it is, loan application, or you're doing, you know, whatever application you're doing, it, once you've done this, it's easy for you to communicate these data sets with anybody within the organization. So rather than everybody connecting to this Excel document, okay, you will build this and even the people who will not be able to maneuver or make a correction to what you've done here. Whatever you've done here is what they will be using on a constant basis, all right? So if you're following me, can you put a yes? It's too quiet. I feel like I'm talking to myself. <laughs> All right. Can we build a performance management tool with this? Yes, absolutely. Fantastic. Yes, any goddamn application. Sorry, I'm using a lot of <laughs> any application within your organization, you can. 
Judith. All right, I can see a lot of yes in here. This is fun. This is beautiful. I love that. All right. So what we're going to do now is this application, this this data flow that we've created. Okay, you see how simple it is to connect to it without any stress. All right. So let's say now we are in HR. We are currently in the HR department, and we need this. Okay. So I'm going to click on Get Data, and you see data flows. Easy, just staring at you in the face, in the face, data flows, click on it, all right? So I'm going to connect to that data flow that I, connect, that I created, okay? So in my workspace, all right, I have a data flow. It is called, it is under the analytics leave tracker, the analytics leave tracker, okay? And this is it here, all right? The analytics leave tracker, okay? So I have this data flow. All right, currently the data set is empty. I'll show you how to refresh it real quick. I'm going to refresh it quickly so that we can get, you know, the most up-to-date data in there. So once I click on it, once I click on the leaf tracker, I'm going to click on load data sets. I'll just go ahead to load it. I don't need to transform anything again, okay? I'm going to load it directly, all right? I'm going to go to my data view. And you see nothing is there currently without anything in there. So what I'll do is I would need to refresh the data set, this data flow. I'll click here to refresh. I'll refresh it now. And you see, refreshing data. So give it a few seconds to just refresh, okay? Now you can go and boil water for your EBA. Do you understand? So if you want to eat EBA, you want to eat, um, you want to eat what other food is there? All right, you want to make coffee, let's take coffee, okay? You can go and make coffee while this is just refreshing, okay? But essentially that's the flow of what we are doing, okay? And we can also automate some of these processes, okay? Like you said, majority of the time, you will need to send for, what they call it, in order for them to approve. Somebody, the, the head of the department or the person within your unit has to approve. And I'm gonna walk you through how you can automate it. Now, whenever you apply for a relief, your immediate boss should get a approval message, should get an approval notification. Either they should approve or reject the application. Well, we're going to do that briefly also. So you can see refreshed, and it was refreshed at um, 1901. That's just a few seconds ago, or a few minutes ago. All right, so if I go back to Power BI now, okay, and I refresh this, All right, you see data, boom, drops in here, okay? The data has dropped in here, fantastic. So we have all the data in here. So now, you see those CEOs, the CFO, the, the, the head of HR, all those people at the top level, guys, okay? This is what they would like to see. Let's just build a very quick and dirty report, not something fancy. So pardon me if, if it doesn't look as fancy as I want it to look like, okay? So I'm gonna insert a text box, and I'm gonna say 10 analytics. Okay, the analytics leave Parker 2023. Okay, so I'm just going to extend it to this place as my header. Okay, I will bold in it, give it a color, maybe a white color. Okay, maybe the font size should be like a 20, center align it. Um, my effects, I'll give it a brown color. Okay, and that's I think this is really enough. This is enough. Okay, so now my leave tracker, I will now start to look at the department. Okay, let's say I have the date here. So I have 11th of June, 11th of June. So this person requested 11th of June to 21st of June. Okay, so I would want to know the date difference between this. Okay, I would need to know the date difference to know how many days this person has requested for leave. But anyways, let's just quickly, I'm just gonna do a very quick formula. Okay, so new column, and I'm going to do um, days. So days would be the date difference. So there's a date difference, okay? Date difference between the end date, okay? And comma, the start date, or the start date, start date, okay? Close the bracket, I press enter. Okay, interval, I need interval, one more thing. Okay, so I'm looking at A, close the bracket and enter. So don't worry, I'm not teaching you that today. I'm just doing something very straight to the point. So, sorry, I mixed it up. So it's also the start date, 
then the end is. Okay, so this one, too, this person started on the 11th to the 21st, last 10 days. But now we didn't, we might not, like I said, it's just something something we can work with. Now, not for, for I mean, let's come up with it. It's supposed to be working days, not actual days. So there might be Saturday and Sunday inside these days. It should not be counted. You understand? Leave days should not be counted. I mean, like um, holidays. So if you have a bank holiday, you have a public holiday, it should not be counted. So those are the things you would like to factor into it, but we don't have enough time to be doing all those sort of, it's not intermediate advanced level calculation. So well, we just make it easy, quick and dirty. So we have this person requested for 30 days, 34 days, 605 days. Who is this person? Salifu, grab you. <laughs> so this person requested for five, 605 days. You're not available for the next how many decades? <laughs> All right. So anyways, we have the number of days in there. Okay. So let's do our reporting. Okay. Let's see the reporting that we're going to do. All right. So the first one I'm going to take is I'm just going to create a table. Okay. I'm going to create a table that's going to be tracking each person. So I'm going to take the person's name. Okay. I'm going to be taking the person's name. Person's, um, okay. Nobody's taking name. So uh, I think we have staff ID. So let me see. I have the full name full name, the type of leave and stuff like that. So full name, full name, uh, what else? Full name, type of leave, the description, 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 let's description. Description is up here somewhere. Details of your leave, details of your leave, and how many days, how many days. So days, I'll bring in days. Okay, so how many days? Okay, I think that's it. maybe name of supervisor will be there somewhere. Okay, and is there any other thing that we need? The type of leave is there already. Okay, and um, I think that's just maybe department. Please state in department. Okay, so I'll put a department in there. Okay, so I have this in there. So <clears throat> staff idea, I'll just use the person's name. Okay, something just easy to work with staff ID. All right, so I'll use a pie chart for the rest of the things I have here. So let's say the department, so the department, okay, department and the number of days that has been taken. So if I look at this, quite a number of, I don't like the way it looks. So I'll use a bar chart instead, okay? I'll use a bar chart and I can easily see, maybe reduce the size of this table, reduce the size of the table, I can easily see the department that has requested for the most number of days. I could also take a look at um, the type of leave. So if I have the type of leave, type of leave, and the number of days people are requested for it. So I could see these exam leave, quite a number of, number of people have thirty seven percent of people going on study leave. I don't like legends. So even though I'm fast, I usually take out, I don't like, I just don't like it. So I'll use the other one, which is category and percent of total. So I can see exam leave 37%, sabbatical 32%, annual leave 25%, so on and so forth. I can just drag it across here, just doing something very quick and easy that we can show to our, you know, major stakeholders within the business. And we can see, Let's say the dep done department, let's say supervisor, take a look at supervisor and then do a bar chart for that one quickly. Um, um name of supervisor quickly, where is it? So what did I name it? Name of supervisor and these. All right, so everything is just there, okay? They'll be able to track. So Anyways, this is what we are looking at. So if it's exam and study leave, and I want to take a look at, I can just click on exam and study leave, and you can see, oh, for exam and study leave, ICT is taking majority of the exam and study leave, all right? And it's coming from Mr. John Kim, okay, with 605 days, do you understand? So we need to find out this person. So if this person that requested, I'll just click on this one again, and I can see it is jo Joseph Bentu that requested for 605 days. So anyways, I could also do a red flag over here <laughs> to say anything that is more than 30 days, anything that is more than 21 days, leave me as a red flag. 
So if I click on this table, let me just quickly do that one. All right, so some of these, I could add a conditional format, font color, let's say background color, okay? And I would say rule, okay? So if the rule is, um, I will add in a rule, some of these greater than or equals to, if it is, so if it is to do, 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 let's say is greater than or it is greater than or equals to 21, but it is less than, and it's less than, it's greater than, it's greater than or equals to zero, to the minimum, okay? And less than or equals to 21 days. So 21 days, okay? So I'll give it a green color. I'll give it green. So meaning that that's good, okay? All right. And I'll add a new rule to say if it is more than, so if it is greater, if it is greater than, or if it is greater than or equals to 21, okay? And less than the maximum number. So I'll give it a red color. I'll give it, don't worry, these are things I'm just showing you that you can actually do, okay? And I'm gonna click on, this one is giving me an arrow. So let me see if it is greater than or equals to, okay, percentage number, supposed to be a number and number, okay? And I'm gonna click on okay. So I can see anything that is greater than 21, it should give me a red color, okay? Anybody that is greater than 21, I'll know that, oh, something is wrong with this person. And I'll click on it. And I can see this person requested for 360, 366 days, okay? And so on and so forth. So, you know, there are quite a number of things that you can do, okay? Uh, last but not least, least, last thing I'm gonna do, okay? I'm gonna publish this, okay? I'm gonna save it first of all. Uh, I'm gonna save it to my desktop and I'm gonna call it Tracker Leave. Okay, Tracker. Okay, I'm gonna call it Leave Tracker and I will save it, I'll publish it to the web, to the web so that I can send it to all the top people that needs this information. So the analytics leave tracker, I'm gonna publish it to the workspace I created at the start. So you see what I created, when I created Power BI, when I went to Power BI, I have this workspace, the analytics leave tracker. So you see, I have published it here. So you see the name of my reports, sorry, I've saved, you got it. So this has been saved already. I've saved it already as leaf tracker, okay? And that is what we have here, you see here. So now it's currently in the web, okay? And I'm sort of automating the whole process. So you see the report I built that was in Power BI desktop is now on the web. Now this particular, this particular report, I can share it with anybody within the organization, all right? So rather than you sending Excel file to say that, hey, kindly find a task, kindly find, it's automated now. Everybody can come here to see the performance of people's leaves within the organization, all right? So I can send it to people, I can copy it as a link, okay? I can copy it as a link for people to see, all right? I can get it as a link and I can send it to people within the organization. I can also chat in Teams, send it to people in Teams so that they can actually get to see it. And so, there are so many other things. You can even put it up in, on the web. Do you understand? You can put it in the PowerPoint. So you're doing board management retreats and all those things. You can put it on all these things, send it in an email, send it as a Teams and all the things that you want to do. Now, drop, okay, you won't be able to view it because you're not part of the organization. We are not part of the team itself, okay? So what you want to do now is approval. That's the last thing I'm going to do every time, you know, talk about some more other things. So approval, I'm going to use Power Automate. Power Automate. I'm going to use Power Automate to automate the approval process. Okay, very quick. I'm not going to go too detailed about this. So I'm going to go to Power Automate. So this Power Automate, and this is how you can automate, you know, business processes like leave. Like when I when you apply for the leave, somebody has to approve it. Your supervisor has to approve it. Okay. So template. I'm going to go to create automated cloud flow. Now this automated cloud flow means that when you Create when once you submit your leave for once you click on submit, it will initiate a transaction. It will initiate a flow. Okay, so I'm going to start with automated cloud flow, and I'm going to call it analytics. I'm just going to call it analytics. Analytics. Okay, analytics. And you see, um, I'm just going to click on skip. 
I think. I'm just gonna go and skip. So I'll start from scratch for you. So the name of the file, like I said, I'm gonna call it analytics, analytics leave tracker. So this is Power Automate. Like I said, in Power BI, we've used Power BI. Now we're using Power Automate. Okay, so now, uh, what do I want to automate? I want to automate the leave application process. So I'll go here, I'll set for form, Microsoft form. So when you submit a form, when you go online and you submit a form, so you see Microsoft form. So I'll click on Microsoft form. When a new response is submitted, meaning that when you request for leave, once you request for leave, what should happen? I'm gonna click on it, all right? So I'm gonna click on the drop down and you see it here. So this, once you have this, okay, once a new response is submitted, click the drop down, you will see 10 analytics leave tracker 2022, which is the same thing with what you have here, 10 analytics leave tracker 2023. 23 analytics leave tracker, 20, this is the form. So this form, that's what I want to automate. So when you submit a new request, okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I'm gonna search for forms again, okay? And I'll get response details. So when you submit a form, you see you have a lot of information. You put in your full name, you put in your staff ID, you put in all this information. That's exactly what I want to, the details you submitted. I want to get the response details, okay? All right, so the form ID is still the same form which is the analytics lead tracker, response ID would be response ID, okay? So anyways, like I said, I'm just putting you through it, okay? You will learn it during the training program, learn how to build very sophisticated, very end-to-end -end automated processes within the organization. So um, the next step is once you request for a leave, you need approval. Somebody has to approve it, okay? Someone has to approve. So I'm going to, there's what we call an approval. There's something we call approvals, okay? So create an approval. So once you see, submit a form, it's gonna get the details, okay? And it's going to approval type. I'm gonna say approve, uh, let me take this, approval rejects first to respond or let me just take, wait for one response, custom responses, okay? So this one, everyone must respond, means that if you have like five supervisors or team lead, everybody must respond, okay, to your leave application. But if it's just first to respond, so if you have like three people, your team lead, you have your, your assistant team lead, if there's anything like that, and the head of the department. So if anybody responds first, fantastic. Okay, so custom response, wait for all responses, wait for one response. So that's what I'm gonna go with. Custom, wait for one response. So I'll put in all the details, okay? So assigned to would now be the supervisor. So if, you have the, if it's within your organization, all you need to just put is that supervisor email, okay? We didn't request for it in our form. There is no supervisor email, okay? But in, in a real sense, we don't need it if you're working with this, within an organization. So within an organization, everybody has an email. I have my email, you have your own email. So it's automated, okay? So rather than me typing people's email in manually, I will just click on the, um, the, person, the person's email. That's a supervisor email. So let's take the supervisor name, for example, uh, name of supervisor. So it's going to be the name of the email in the real sense of it. It should be the email of the supervisor, but we don't have that information, so we can't put it there. So the title would be leave application, okay? Leave application by the name of the person, full name, okay? By the full name of the person. So it's gonna be automated. So anytime you request for a leave, it's going to go to this person. The title will be leave application by person's full name. So the way you wrote your full name here, okay? Adeliki Mohammed, it's literally gonna be like that here. Yeah? Leave application by, Deliki Mohammed. So it's going to be automated. So once you submit a form analytically, the head of HR and the other people will get to see all the information, overall information on who is going on leave, who has gone on leave, what is this, what is that, what's going on in terms of leave applications and all that. And in terms of this, there's no need for HR to be looking at who has who is requested for leave, who has sent me email. Oh, you sent me an email. Oh, really? Let me go and check. There's no need for that anymore. 
the moment you submit the form, once you submit this form, all right, you see the flow would be initiated, okay? Get your response. It will send an approval to your supervisor. Your, your supervisor is going to approve. HR will be looking at this to track how many people have gone above 21 days in a year. So if it's 5, 25, if it's 26, whatever it is, okay? And if you want to break it down into month, okay? If it's everybody must go at least five days in a month or three days in a month, or in December, you should not do more than 30 days. All those things you can track them using Power BI, you know, as a means. And don't forget that our Power BI reports, our Power BI data sets is automated to refresh how many times? Sorry, let me just go back to my leaves. okay? It's automated to refresh with, it's going to be refreshing how many times in a day? Four times in a day, 7, 10, 12, 2 and 5 p.m. So you see all these things, the HR will be using these two, or each, you know, track things happening within the organization. So this is a very simple, quick and dirty automating leave application within the organization. Very quick and dirty solution. All right. So this is what we can do. And this is what you would be doing as a power path of developer. Just some of the things. Let me now show you. Let me let me just bring in Kingsley. Kingsley, um, I'm gonna be bringing you one of our guys internally. The, show you another thing about what you can actually, you know, in terms of automating IT support, okay? IT support, okay? So if you're working on, obviously every time you have, you know, IT, so you have IT needs, okay, something wrong with your laptop, you want to request for a new laptop, how can you build an application? Now we use Microsoft Forms for this. So I'm going to show you, um, Kixley is going to show you how you can also use our apps. So you build an application without coding, okay? That's the key thing, we're not coding in this. So let me show, let me just stop sharing, Kingsley, so you can go ahead and share. Is that okay? Okay, that's fine, that's fine. Thank you so much, Epemina. Hi, everyone, yeah. Super excited to be here. So I will just go real quick and start, All right? So I'm sharing my screen. So basically, um, yeah, I'm sure you can see my screen. Yes, it's all, it's all now. Okay, thanks. Okay, yeah, so that's perfect. So, so this is like an IT app, and I built it with Power Apps. Yeah, if I mean, I said it earlier that it's Power Platform you can build custom applications so to help business processes and also use Power Automate and Power BI. I'll not run through that. I would just um, go ahead and start the app. So, this is like the home screen. All right, so this is the home screen and uh, my applications have several screens. So since the essence of my app is to um, is to collect um, requests or issues from um, people in my organization, probably they have IT issues, probably with their PC or with their laptop. So they just log on to their app and once they log on, you can see automatically it's even, it's even showing me my name. Yeah, welcome Andy Kingsley. I did not type this, but um, with PAVS function, it's the work of my name. So I just go ahead and uh, click on enter issue. Okay, I clicked on enter issue and even my name, it has even helped me enter my name without me getting to even type my name. You can see that's beautiful. So I am in the account department. Yes, um, yeah, I'm just in the account department and I am having an issue with my laptop. I just select that. So um, what's the power? It's, it's, ah, yeah, because my PC is not coming on. My PC is not coming on. There is no file to attach. So I just go right ahead and submit it. And um, the beautiful thing about this um, application is this. Yeah. Um, once I submit this, once I submit this request, my um, facility, the facility manager in the organization is just going to get an um, a email straight up. Yeah, so he's going to get an email and um, let's check that. So, okay, the email is yet to enter, but let me run you through other part of my screen. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, okay, maybe I want to view previous issues. Oh, okay, I think the email just entered now. Maybe I want to view previous issues and see. Yeah, so this is, um, I have a screen that will show me previous issues that I've logged in already. And then the IT persons, they are yet to even 
um, attend to me. I just click on this and then I see this, all right? Yeah. Or maybe they've even attended to me and I, and I want to even delete it. I can um, either delete from here, I can either delete from here, click on this icon or just go to um, my home screen, press delete issues, click on this and then I just delete. But okay, let's check. Okay, yeah, desk help request, desk help request. Okay, you can see this. Okay, so my um, line, my facility manager has just received the email, but um, that is not all, that is not all. I built all of this using Power Platform, all right? I built all of this using Power Platform and I, and I use a Microsoft to run it. Now you might be asking, what's my data source? Okay, if I mean, I use um, Excel, as is as is as is data source. I used SharePoint in this case. I used SharePoint in this case. And look at what I just submitted. You can see it right here, right? You can see it right here. So I, so I created a SharePoint list. Yeah, I created a SharePoint list that will um, accept um, all these inputs. Exactly what I filled in my Power Apps. Do you remember the name, the department, issue priority, and description? It is everything is here. I built the. Um, this is my data source. I started by building my data source and yeah, I created all of this. And thereafter I moved on, I moved on to Power Apps. And yes, this is my application. All right, you can you can you can see this right. Okay, then okay. then let me show you how my flow look like. Yeah, so I built my flow with Power to me. This is my flow. So I will just go out right ahead and update um, edit it. So it's loading. I just wanted to see the cards I used, how I built my flow. Yeah, I know we are getting familiar with Spa Automate already. Yeah, so we know what the card is like. So you can see all of this, right? So my trigger is this. Yeah, when an item is created in SharePoint, yeah, my facility manager needs to receive an email. All right, he needs to receive an email. This is his email address. This should be the subject of the email. And then I customized the um the content of the email the body of the email so that it will suit it's going to look real yeah and, and and it is just going to look perfect all right so you can see and then i save this i go right ahead and i just um run my application and submit my request and everything works perfectly this is one of the real beauty of power apps all right all right, fantastic. Uh, so one key thing I would like to pass across, okay, from our conversation today is this is done without you coding. All right, you are doing this without you writing a piece of code. So you are building applications, you are building web pages, you are building automated processes and all that, and analytics across the business. So these are the things that you would get to learn from our platform training program. Now, if you've learned something new today, could you put a yes in the chat? If you put, if you've learned something new, let me see the people that have learned something new today. So, what do you think about Power Platform? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I can see it's yes, so yes, so. So, one thing I like to tell most people, I just, I don't like to just talk about the application, what you're going to learn, but also the benefit of you learning this. Okay, and you know, one thing is. In terms of career paths, trust me, it is a very, very interesting career path to take on. So we have Power Platform. Like I said, Power Platform. We search for this at the start of the session, and you will get to see her uh, Power Platform. Okay. Sorry, I'm not spelling this terribly. But not from, if you may know. Okay, Power Platform. <laughs> So you can see Power Platform Developer and the salaries are absolute. So this is what they are looking for. And let's just run through one of them. Power Platform Developer, I'm just going to run through it. All right. So uh, this is, you know, Power BI and Finance will be advantageous. Okay. So ideally will be numerate experience Power Platform building both modern and during Canvas applications. So what you see came in, uh, things last done. Okay. Those are what we, you know, the different kinds of application you can actually build. They are called model and Canvas driven application. All right. I have experienced building flows, okay, in Power Automate. You see the flows that we created, the temporary flow that we created in Power, in Power Automate. That's exactly what they're looking for. So, all this is, is what they're looking to pay somebody 60 to 70, 40 to 60,000 pounds, you know, if you're based in the UK. And you see all these rules are like that. 
literally all the rows are like that okay so all the things that you're looking for are all embedded in the rows that you're looking for and you know all you need is exactly what we are providing for you so even in terms of power bi developer so like i said you can also work as a bi power bi developer okay that's another role you can take on power bi developer okay let's take a look at this also and you get to see power bi dots and more power bi dots power apps okay you see all this thing combining them together will give you what you're looking for as a power bi developer okay you could also work as a bi developer do you understand so these are the things these are the career parts that you have in there and you can look at all the salary skills 50 to 55 that's 350 to 400 pounds per day and these are the salaries you know can we get your contact don't worry my contact is available all right so these are the job roles some of the job roles that you can take on okay from becoming a bi developer or what we call a microsoft power platform developer so many opportunities all right so many opportunities and what are you learning you're learning power bi you're learning power apps you're learning power automate you're learning power virtual agent we didn't even talk about virtual agents all right, there's so many things you can do with virtual agents. You're going to be learning how to use SharePoint, SharePoint list, and so on and so forth. Okay, so you know, talking you through the training program, it's 100% online, 100% online. So you can be at the comfort of your house, learn, and start to earn. Okay, 100% online. So you know, you're looking for remote jobs and you want to work remotely. I get a lot of people say that, oh, I want physical training, but you're looking for a remote job. So how does it correlate? <laughs> All right, so it's hundred percent online. So regardless of anywhere you are, like I said, the way we both said in start at the start of the session was we have people getting jobs across different regions in Nigeria, working for a firm in the UK, in the US. Those are the things that we are looking to, and this is these are the things that we achieve. So hundred percent learning opportunity. You're going to be learning online, regardless of your time difference and whatever the situation is. You're, you'll be learning online. And on practical session, like what we just talked through today. Today was just a thought through session. And you can see how ads on practical it was. And do you know the difference? Rather than using theory to explain these things, if I had a bunch of slides that was explained to you, I'm very sure all of you will not stay to the end of the session. You will get bored. Okay. But and that's the reason why we that's the approach that we take to use practical to explain theory. Because the moment you use practical explain theory, it becomes easy for you to understand, easy for you to deploy. Okay. And that's why our participants do great things when they get jobs, you know, in the industry where they find themselves. So hands on practical sessions used to teach you theory and give you that practical experience into getting your job. All right. Lifetime access to materials, okay, and experts. Lifetime access to materials and experts. So these are the things that we're going to help you with, okay? So materials we're going to use in the training program, the video, the recording, the fifth thing that we're going to be working with, you would have lifetime access to these materials, all right? And even the expert like myself, like Kingsley, and any other person, you know, that will be working with you. So you'll be getting 20 plus classes with, you know, 50 plus topics, okay? The average salary of a power platform developer in the UK is £44,000, £44,600 per annum. All right, that's the average, okay? Meaning that you can actually earn more than the average, okay? So add six projects to your portfolio. So for all the tools you'll be working with, from Power BI to Power Automate to Power, Power, BI, uh, Power Apps to Power Virtual Agents, you'll be building projects, using projects to learn certain concepts, okay, model-driven app. You know, and um, Canvas driven apps, you know, Power BI, data flows, and all the things that we did today. You'll be building projects, and that's how you get to have a repository that is filled up with different projects that will land you your first job as a Power Platform developer or a BI engineer, and so on and so forth. Okay. So, 100% job visibility, also part of the things we'll be working with you. Like I said, the key thing for this project, for the training program, is to get you a role, is to get you a job. Okay, to get you sellable, you know, to potential recruiters, to potential employers, and so on. Industry relevant certification, that's another part. Okay, you will get a certificate upon completing the training program. So, this training program is a two month plus training program, and you also get one month free virtual internship. It's a two month training program with one month 
virtual internship. That's what we're going to be working with. Okay. So, uh, all right, what would you be learning? In the course this already, okay, we'll start from the beginning. So, this training program is for both beginners with no experience and for experienced professionals looking to transition, you know, to advance their career. So, if you're a beginner, perfect. That's where you're supposed to be. If you're experienced and you want to transition, You've been a data analyst, you've been a, I don't know, you've been another career path entirely, or uh, you've been working as an HR professional, you've been working as a you know administrator, operation officer, all the career paths, and you want to transition, fantastic. You can also use this to transition. All right. So uh so introduction to Power Platform, we start from introduction to components of Power Platform to Microsoft Power Platform, to Power Apps, Power to Made, Power Virtual Agent, and building your case and creating an action. Building your case and, I see a lot of people asking for the cost fees, I'm coming. <laughs> don't you want to get what you get from the training program, okay? Just calm down, don't worry. I'll, I would explain everything to you, all right? So I have a special offer for people that wait to the end. Do you understand? So just wait, don't worry. It's very easy. I'll go through everything. So we start, like I said, for beginners, going from zero to 100. And the key thing here is building your case and creating an action. Like we did today, was the lead factor that we built today, okay, to track setting the issues. So the case here was, the process was manual. And what did we do? We used the tools within the Power Platform to create a solution to the problem, which is a lead, people requested for leave manually, sending emails, writing it on a piece of paper, you understand, and all that. So we automated, that's the case, and we created a solution to the case, all right? So those are the kind of things that you've been working with, and you'll be able to harness your skill set in your power platform. But you see all the theories, all these things that we're learning, all this technical side of things that we're learning, it only amounts to 50% of what you will get from the training program. So the technical side of things is just amounting to 50% of what you will get from the training program. Now, I'm very sure a lot of you will be asking, what is the remaining 50%? What does the other 50% contain? What does it contain? Very simple. All right, so let me just explain your learning journey, okay? So number one, your learning journey would be, like I said, a total of three months plus. So two months, project-based life classes. So you'll be building projects from Power BI to Power Automate to Power Virtual Agent to Power Apps and so on and so forth. All right, you have two months to build projects, to learn, to, you know, to own your skills within that area. So we have two months of doing that. You have another two weeks, you know, to build a capstone project. Now, this capstone project is one full end-to-end -end project that would incorporate everything together. So you'll be building an application that uses Power App Power to meet, power virtual event, power BI, everything very holistic projects that you can tell, you can show to potential recruiters that these are the things that you have built. All right. And at the end again, you still have one month free virtual internship where you'll be doing more projects, you'll be building more projects. So two months project based life classes, two weeks have some projects. These are end to end solution that you're going to be building. All right, and uh, one month virtual internship. Okay, now the next part is virtual instructor led classes, like what we're doing currently. Okay, so you have an instructor that will stand in front of you okay, and lecture you and put you through the practical side of things. Okay, so you'll be learning from some of the guys, some of the best guys in the industry that have wealth of experience that have worked with some of the big companies. Audio your hands and guide you through the process of becoming a Power Platform developer, okay? So you'll be learning from the best, essentially. You'll be able to collaborate on Slack, on Google, you know, Google Classroom, WhatsApp, and so on and so forth. So you have the instructor-led class classes, okay? So classes run on the weekends. I'm sure all of you are asking for the fees. You want to know when you'll be having your classes, okay? So your classes will run on the weekend, Saturdays and on Sunday. So on Saturday between 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., that's where your classes will run. 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturday. And on Sunday, 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. West African time. All right? So this is when the classes run, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And we also have it running 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. West African time. So that's when the classes run. We really have classes running on the weekends. We have drop-in sessions during the week. So if you have issues, 
you want to get something resolved, you know, we can have dropping sessions during the week to, you know, explain certain concepts to you better on one-on-one -on -one basis or group basis and all that. But essentially, live classes are on the weekends, Saturdays and Sundays. Now, number four is join series of recruitment ask, uh, ask sessions. So the ask sessions essentially are designed to teach you how to apply for jobs, okay? Places you can apply for jobs, remote jobs, build to the region, you know, and all these things. We teach you how you can apply for these jobs, okay? So, you know, that's the fourth part, because at the end of everything, it's not just you learning the technical skills, it's the additional part of it, the virtual internship that you can add to your CV, the virtual instructor lettering program, the weekend, the flexibility in terms of you learning new skills, all right, and the recruitment app for, you know, for you to get new jobs and all that. So this is just a further breakdown of what you'll be learning from Power BI across all the, pro or across all the programs. Now, the other 50% is very essential. So I told you the technical side of things only amounts to 50%, only amounts, the technical side only amounts to 50% for you to get a job. So now the other 50% is the additional benefits that you require, okay? And that's number one. Number one is CV review. Now your CV is very important because you can be good technically. If you don't have a good CV, you will never be get, you will never get called. And I tell my own personal story how it was difficult for me when I finished, you know, when I moved outside the country and I was applying for jobs and I spent the first three months not getting a very good, not even getting, I was getting calls, but I was getting rejections more. I was getting a lot of rejections. Why? Because my CV was not reviewed, okay? So I don't have a reviewed, I don't have a very standard, good and standard CV. So you see the CV review is very important. And that's why we do a one-on-one -on -one CV review to help you review your CV and get you past what we call ATS. So even in Canada, in the US, you apply for jobs in the UK, you apply for jobs in the US, in Canada, and all these regions, they use what we call ATS, Application Tracking System, all right? So there are certain things you need to put on your key, you know, certain keywords you, they are looking for. So when you're applying for a job, you're not just throwing out your application, you are tailoring your CV to that job application. And there are certain ways you need to tailor your CV in order for the eight years to approve your CV. So all of us are looking for, let the recruiter just call me. Let the recruiter just call me. I will sell myself with my mouth. But before that recruiter will call you, you need to even, the ETS needs to even approve your CV. And if they don't approve your CV, they will never call you, okay? And that's why you see a lot of people getting a lot of rejections. So bear it in mind that you need to have a standard CV. And these are the things that we're going to provide for you. We will work on your CV to get you into the door to get your, you know, your first role as a BI developer, power platform engineer, so on and so forth. We have also... LinkedIn prof LinkedIn optimization. LinkedIn is one of the best places you can get remote jobs. So if you don't have your LinkedIn optimized, okay, if you don't have your LinkedIn optimized, and I'm going to show you quickly how to use LinkedIn to get a remote job. But I'm sure that's why some of you are here also. That's why you're here. Okay. So I'm going to show you. So let me use my normal browser. Okay. How to use LinkedIn to get remote jobs very quickly. So if you don't have a LinkedIn, if you don't have a LinkedIn profile, please not open one. All right, so you can see some of our people ongoing projects with analytics. So you see, we're doing great stuff with the people that we have in house. All right, so anyways, let me just go and look for a job. I'm looking for a job, okay? I'm looking for a job. So let me look for Power BI. Let me just look for Power BI developer, okay? And I'm going to put in the region, the United States. Okay, so I'm looking for a remote role in the United States, okay? Search. All right, so Power BI developer, but well, let me just look for BI, BI analyst, BI developer. Let me, just, let me just look for BI developer, okay? Yeah, because everything will fall into that particular category. All right, so the next thing is on site or remote. So you see this option here, you have on site slash remote. All right, I have show 315 of them. Okay, so you see Power BI developer, Power BI developer, Power BI programmer, data tableau, data analyst, Power BI developer, and these are all fully remote roles, BI developer, tableau developer, BI developer, you know, and all this, these are all 
fully remote roles, fully remote roles. So we're going to be showing you how to use optimize your LinkedIn profile so you can get access to all these remote roles and more, not just in the US, quite a number of them also across different regions, okay? So that's what we're going to be doing also for LinkedIn optimization. We're going to be optimizing your LinkedIn so that potential recruiters will get to support your CV, your profile as quick as possible. So if you've never gotten an email, they call it email, where you just see a recruiter will just send you an email to say that, like, oh, I saw your profile. You wonder where they see your profile. That's because the LinkedIn profile is optimized, okay? So if you've never received that, then you need a LinkedIn optimization session with analytics, okay? We also have Upwork optimization, okay? Upwork is a site that you use for freelancers, that you get to use for freelancers. So if you could just go online and type Upwork, okay? Okay, it's a site, you can check it out yourself. Find the best freelance jobs. So we tell you how to optimize your Upwork's you know, profile in order for you to get access to freelance jobs. So you might decide to work remotely. You may decide to work freelancing, meaning that freelancing is a bit more, is a bit more flexible than contract role, than a remote role, all right? So it's a lot more free, you know, freelancing. You know, so you're working with like two, three people at the same time. You know, you have different deadlines. You are, you are detecting your time, essentially, like a company on your own. All right, so you'll be teaching you how to optimize your Upwork, okay, your Upwork profile. Now, if you get in the job market, I'm sure you guys are new to Power Platform. So some of you have never heard of it before. So you don't even know what kind of jobs you can apply for. So those are the things that we're going to teach you, what jobs you can apply for, you know, what places you should be applying, where you need to get jobs, where, where you can likely get a new job, and all these things where you can earn more. Do you understand? So that's what we're going to be doing in the navigating the job market. So, like I said, the whole lesson of redoing this training program is not just for you to upskill yourself. Yes, to upskill yourself, but in addition to that, is to get you a better pay, to get you into the tech industry, to get you more Africans into the tech industry. Now, the next thing is recommendation and reference letter. These are things that we offer to people. And I, I like to show people, I like to show you proof of what we are doing, okay? So I'm going to show you one reference letter that we, that I actually just approved. That was over the week. Like I said, I was telling you guys, just last week, we had five people. I personally approved five people's new job here in the UK, one in the, two in the UK, uh, one in Nigeria, and we had another person in Canada. And I'm going to just show you the last one I got, which was, um that was on Friday. I'm just going to quickly bring it up so you can see. Um, <clears throat> experience okay so let me just i'm going to screenshot it so you can get to see it individually okay so just give me a second i'm going to show you the reference how the reference how do you look for reference how why reference letter is one of the big deal when you are applying for a job when you're trying, even though you are getting a job in the uk in the us they usually request for references they usually request for reference so i'm just going to quickly show you this Okay. Okay. So I just went out to clean up the person's name. This is still showing a little. All right. So this is expert candidate verifier reference request for this is the person's name. I'm sure you won't be able to. I don't want to show you. And this came in when Friday, June 9. Today is June 11. Okay. This came in on June 9, 6 04, two days ago. I just screenshotted these for my email. I don't want to show you my email because the person's main details are there. So private documents are in there. All right. So this came in on the 9th of June, on the 9th of June, 6 04 p.m., two days ago. Shemena April, we're contacting you to request for a reference for this person. The reference will take a couple of minutes to complete. Please feel, please follow one of the three options below. And you can see everything there problems providing the reference, and you can see the referencing team. So you're getting a new job, a re remote, international, you're in the UK, you're in the US, you're in Canada. Majority of this company will do what we call a reference or recommendation letter. We require it, okay? So we provide this recommendation and reference letter. And I'll tell you for a fact, we write the best. And that's why we get a lot of people getting jobs across the international landscape. So if you want to work with us, we will work with you. Okay, and would also ensure that you get that job that you're looking for. So, like I said last week, I did I did over five, but I did five people last week. That was the last one I got on Friday. Okay, so our people are getting jobs. This was a senior data analyst role. It's one of the tech firms here in the UK. So we are doing well in terms of what we we know what we are doing. 
All right, and that's what we do best. Okay, so you know, last but not the least, job and interview preparation. So you see, the person that got the reference, we did a couple of interview sessions together. Okay, where we do prep sessions, we mock interview sessions. Because you've never done this before, you've never done BI developer. You don't know what kind of question they would ask you. So we do these mock interviews to, you know, to mimic the scenario of what you will be facing. So I don't smile. Okay, I act like a recruiter. I'll ask you a question, tell me about yourself. So how do you answer that question? Tell me about yourself. So a lot of people will still say, oh, we're six in my family. You know, I have seven years of experience and all those things that are not relevant. So, you know, there are different ways you can answer this question, but the best approach is called the seat approach. Seat. All right. So the seat approach, I'm right. All of you will be looking for me to tell you, but I won't tell you. Okay. So the seat basically, and I'm going to Google it and you get to see it. So the seat approach is one of the best ways you answer, tell me about yourself. Now, for situational based questions, we have the star technique. Okay. The star technique to answer situational based questions like, tell me about a time you did this. Now, if you've never gone for this kind of interview, you will likely, you will likely flop because you don't have that experience. So how do you not prepare for those kind of interviews? That's where you have these interview preparation sessions. So if you go online and you went to go and reading books online, okay, you're watching video on YouTube, you would likely spend years trying to transition and you're coming online to tell people that it is impossible for you to transition. Meanwhile, you have people that go through analytics and you see all these additional benefits provided for them and they find it easy to transition easier because we have a community, we have a group of people that are literally guiding them through the process of transitioning to tech. So rather than spending one year to watch video on YouTube, you dare me, I'm trying to figure things out yourself. You have a group of people that will dedicate their lives to you to ensure that you get what you're looking for, get that better pay, get that better job in tech, and so on and so forth. So that's essentially what we are. And that's what we do. Do you understand? So um, global demand for tech is also something that you should be familiar with, and we're going to expose to you, you know, in our training programs when you go through. You want to go through. These are the things that we do during the mentorship session. All right. So we have mentorship sessions every Wednesday evening. All right. So you see, this particular tech, there are so many tech opportunities. If you have tech, you know, even tech boy, you're a tech sales, there are so many opportunities, especially for people that are looking to relocate. So Canada has the Global Talent Stream Program which is open for people that have tech skills. And once you get a job in Canada, it takes you two weeks to get a job, two weeks to get your PR, I mean, to get your work visa, two weeks. The fastest way to get to Canada, it's through the global talent stream. Google it yourself, you get to see it. The UK has a global talent visa. Germany has a blue card scheme. Singapore has the tech pass program. Australia has the global, tech, the global talent visa. French tech visa program, critical skills employment program. So these are for tech professionals. Are you a tech professional? When the country look at your CV or your, your curriculum or your experience and classify you as a tech bro or the tech sis. So those are the things that we're looking at and we'll be exposing to you during the training program, okay? All right, opportunities, freelance, I've already showed you all this. There are still so many sites that you can go to and you can get to see you know, uh, remote roles and so on and so forth. Quite a number of remote roles, especially if you're looking at the US. All right. I know majority of you are excited and you want to know. <laughs> all right, but I'm going to show you, but I also want to show you the opportunities that you get. Okay. So if I go to well found, okay, for example, this is just one very popular one. And this is the reason why I'm showing you, but there are quite a number of other ones that you can actually use to get remote roles. So if we're going to be looking at this, and let me just show you, you have engineering, you have um, product jobs, design jobs, you know, data analytics jobs, okay? <laughs> just scared. <laughs> so you see number of job roles. These are all remote roles that you can take on, okay? And you click on view more roles. All you need to do is register. You'll see all the roles from Power Platform to Power BI Development to Power BI Developer to BI Developer Engineering and so on and so forth. So there are quite a number of opportunities, okay? I just want to let you know this, the opportunity. I know you're scared, okay? But I want to tell you that, relax, relax. There are so many opportunities available for you, all right? 
So, you know, you can work as a power platform engineer, a BI engineer, data analyst, BI analyst, data analytics manager, process analyst, business analyst, power BI developer. You can take on all these roles, all right? So you work with, these are the tools, some of the tools you're getting to work with, okay? Excel, Power BI, Data Flows, Data, um, Power Apps, SharePoint, Virtual Agent, Power Automate. We've talked about this before, all right? Now the internship program, you can add it to your CV, okay? One month, one month of you owning your skills, project review with an expert, six real life projects. Don't worry, we provide so many additional benefits to you, the training program. And the reason why we're doing this, like I said, is so that if you can get a job after you finish the training program, all right? That's the whole lesson of we doing all these things is so that you can get a job after your training with us, okay? So that's why we got recognized by all the, the newspapers, the dailies, the ones in the UK, the ones in Nigeria and across the world. That's why we got recognized because that is what we do best. Do you understand? And if you go through us, we will provide the best for you, all right? So now, a lot of you have been asking me, if you mean, how much is this program? This thing is too sweet. It's too good to be true. How much is it? Do you understand? I know you guys are excited. You want to see it. All right. We have a training program that will be started on the 1st of July, 2023. We have a training program that will be starting on the 21st, on the 1st of July, 2023. So I want a drum roll. So this training program is going to be starting on the 1st of July, 2023. It's going to be 400 pounds. So even in the UK, it's 400 pounds. That's equivalent of what? 320,000 Naira. Okay, that's 320,000 Naira. Uh, what we call 400 pounds. Now you can pay in two installments. You can pay in two installments of 250 and 100, 150. All right. And you can pay in Naira also in installment, two installments of 200 and 120,000 Naira. Two installments. Okay. So but now, like I said at the start of the session, I have a special offer for people that wait till the end of the session. Now, let me tell you the special offer. We have an early bed discount that we are running at the moment, okay? Now, this early bed discount is still for the program starting on the 1st of July, okay? It's still the program starting on the 1st of July. Now, it's only available for the first 20 people. It's only available for the first 20 people a register only available for the first 20 people so rather than you paying 400 pounds or 320,000 naira you can pay 300 pounds okay in two installments of 200 pounds and 100 pounds all right so now the first installment is for you to secure your space into the classes and you can pay make your next payment the second payment one month into the program all right, you can make the second payment of 100 pounds one month into the training program. Now, if you're in Nigeria, all right, you can pay in Naira of 200, 270,000 Naira to installment of 180,000 and 90,000 Naira. If you're in Ghana, we have the pay stack that you can use to make payments. So click on the pay stack link. Uh, our guys, I so sorry, you can drop the links for payment registration, please. You can just drop it for people that are outside the country. Okay? So, and if you're outside the country, you're in across Europe, you're in the US, you're in Canada, and you want to make payments, we have the PayPal link for you to make payments. Okay? So we have this information provided for you. Okay? So don't worry, in Ghana, just use the PayPal link. It's going to do the conversion for you. We don't do the conversion. The app itself, Paystack will do the conversion for you in Ghana series at all, okay? So if you're going to be using the discounted fees, okay, it is only available for the first 20 people. Now, a lot of people will look at the date and say that this is on the 1st of July. Now, this discount you're running is called the early bird discount, called early bird discount. You know, this is going to be for the first one week, all right? So this is going to expire by next week, all right? Is it not going to expire by next next week or when we eat the first 20 people, okay? When we eat the first 20 people to register, all right? So if you're looking to register for the 1st of July, which is going to be the first Saturday in July, all right? We're only looking at the first 20 people to register. We're only looking at the first 20 people to register, all right? And it's going to expire next week on or before 
Thursday, this coming this coming week Thursday. So this is an early bird discount looking for you to join the session. All right. So um, these are the account numbers, okay? The UK and the Nigerian account number. So I'm just going to click on the. So if you are using the PayPal link, if you click on you know the part payment, you want to make the part payment, and you click on the part payment link, all right? You should see something like this. All right, so this is it for you to pay 200 pounds, okay, for the tech career program. And you can make, once you make payments, you get the, you get all the information that you're looking for. So you can click on buy now and you can see everything is all secured by PayPal, okay? So if you're going to be using the Paystack link, okay? So if you want to use, make payments using the Paystack link, okay? So even in Ghana, please look for the Paystack, Paystack link. So the Paystack link, you can use it to purchase part payment for the Power Platform training program. So you see Power Platform, okay? Click on Power Platform, and you would be able to purchase it using Paystack. So if you're in Ghana, so if you say part payment, you should be able to see 180,000 error, okay? And you can, you know, just add to bag and check out. Okay, so power platform, part payments, 180,000 naira, check out and add information and you know, make payments. So you can either use the Paystack link or you use the PayPal link. So if you're in, Ghana, you're in Ghana, please, the Paystack link is the first one you see there for card payments, use the Paystack. So if you're outside the country, you can also use the PayPal link, which is what you have over here also. All right, so. Let's see what you work with. So let me see if I can get, if you have any questions, this is the best time for you to ask your questions before we call it a day, all right? So any question, any question, concerns, uh, observation? Let me see, I'll be happy to take your questions. That's approximately 5,000 Canadian, uh, Canadian CDs. Uh, I'm not sure, I don't know how much. And over 300,000 era. No, it's 270,000 naira for the discount for the early bed discount. Okay, it's 270,000 for the early bed discount, in which you can pay in two installments 180,000 for the first installment. That's 180,000 naira for the first installment. And the second installment is 90,000 naira. All right, so would there be a certificate at the end of the training? Absolutely. So you can get, you will get a certificate after the training program concludes. All right, to get an industry relevant case study, um, case study, industry relevant certificates upon completing the training program. So if you have any question, please feel free to raise up your hands and I'll be taking your questions. Okay. Okay, so we have some participants that are willing to, you know, to discuss to tell you what they've done. So we have our participants that have gone through the training program and I would like to, you know, talk to you about what they've learned, what they've done, what they've been able to achieve. So before we take them, I have Don Kwawe, if I can ask it on me. Video, yes, go ahead. Yeah, good evening, sir. Yes, good evening. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thank you for your presentation. Amazing. I joined yesterday and I've joined today too. Uh, I, I am really interested in your program. You are doing very well, but uh, I, we have not used the pay stack to do payment here before. Uh, I don't know how the process is all about. Where are you based? Sorry. That is, I'm, I'm in Ghana. Yes, use the pay stack. This is my first time of uh, hearing of the pay stack. No, yes, it's fine. You can use it's secured. It's also a secured, it's a secured platform. You can Google Paystack. Paystack is one of the biggest platform for online okay. payments and all that. So you can Google them to be sure that you are in, but we you can literally just go through watch videos yeah. on part. Yes. So Paystack is one of the biggest, you know, in terms of online payments and all that. Okay. Yeah. Which which means I can use my bank card, Visa card, or MasterCard to do the payments. To make the payments, hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thanks so, a lot. Thanks. The, the I appreciate you taking when? This June or July? It starts on the 1st of July. It starts on the 1st of July. of July. Yes. So okay. we're running the early bird discount to get people registered early for the training program. Okay. So okay. it's early bird. So if you want to be part of the early bird, you will need to take advantage of this discount we are running at the moment. And the early bird is how much? The early bird, you can pay in two installments, but for you to secure your position, that is either 200 pounds or 180,000 naira. 
Okay. But I don't know okay. what the equivalent would be in Ghana cedars. So okay. once you go through pay, once you go through pay stack, all right, it's going yeah. to do the conversion for you, all right, based okay. on the rates and all that. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. And if you have any issues, please don't hesitate to reach out to are you on any of the WhatsApp group? No, I I only communicated privately with one of the Adimi. Okay, yes, please. If yeah, you have any issues or any questions, that, uh, okay. Participants are not allowed to uh, comment or write. Okay, yes, you can just send a message to any of the admin, any of the okay. admin on the platform. You can send them a message directly asking for okay. details or information. Or if you, okay. better say, if you want to speak with me directly, just ask okay. for if a mena and I would answer, I will get to speak with you. All right? Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, no I'm problem. grateful. I'm, I'm I'm absolutely grateful. You joined to our sessions. I really appreciate you taking our time to join the sessions. Thank you very Thank much. You. How do you pronounce too. your name? I'll just call you Gideon, yeah? Yeah, that is Gideon. Gideon, all right. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Have a wonderful Thank day. You. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So we have some people, our participants are willing to, to talk to us. So um, I said, are you there? Do you want to navigate out to, do you want to tell us how to work this out? Okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And so the participants are here to actually show the attendees that it's actually possible to learn this thing within the space of two months. Uh, they are going to be coming on to show some of the wonderful projects they've worked on. I can see from the chat uh, box that some of us are actually asking for, for, oh, can we see more projects? Can we see more apps? Definitely, you can. So uh, first off, I'm calling on Michael. Michael, uh, can we uh, turn on the video so I can uh, spotlight you? Okay. Hello, Mrs. Okay. I see, Hello, yes, Michael. I can. I hope I can be saying. Yes, okay. yes, definitely. So good evening, everyone. I'm Michael Carmen, and I joined to analytics um, since February, or let me say late January. And I, I joined the power platform Cobot One. And so I just want to showcase what I've done so far very quickly. Amongst many things, I've been able to create applications, chatbots, to make processes. But I'll just share my chatbot with you quickly so you can see. Can everyone see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, so this is a chatbot that should register you for an event. And this is supposed to be, say for instance, the popular generating service on event. So we just run this very quickly. So I start by saying hello and the chatbot should reply me. Um, okay, let me just click on test chatbot. Hello, can you still see my screen? Yes, we can, but your video just went off. <laughs> oh, okay. I think it's but, uh, uh, Sorry, let me just switch it off. Okay, that's no problem. Uh, Michael, I think you've gone muted also, so we can't hear you and we can't see you also. Okay, uh, while Michael sorts that out and you know, gets everything in place, uh, Norman, can you kindly show us uh, some of the amazing things that you've worked on over the past few months? Uh, sorry, okay, okay. Okay, okay, Michael, you're back. Yeah, I, I usually have this problem every time I want to, to present my slide. So I can not want to see my screen. No, it's gone off already. Okay, so let me just share it again. Can everyone see it now? Yes. Okay, so I just do this quickly. Hello. Uh, keep having So we about the break in transmission. <laughs> I uh, think your, your internet might be 
seems to yes, be. Yes, I'm, I'm just having little problems right now, but uh, let me see. Uh, my network is there, but I don't know. Network seems to be doing me wrong right now. Is it, but, does okay, it let, say... me, let me let me allow one present. So I, I don't um okay. Let me see. Let me see if it, if it will come up now. Okay, fine. Thank God. So that my network is back. So you can see he says hello. I'm Tanalita. I can help you with your questions and inquiries. If you'd like to speak to a human agent, please let me know. So what can I help you for? So I want to register. And it asks, would you like to register for Tanalita Academy to turn event? So I'll go for Yes. And then it says, great. Thanks for sharing your interest. Do you require assistance or a registration form? So if you click require assistance, the bot will enable you to register. If you click a form, it will direct you to a link. So let us require assistance. So we see how, you, how it goes. So would you like to attend the event? Would you like to attend the event? So I see um, by 10 p.m. on July in July 1st, right? Um, what else? When would you like to do it first? Okay, say 10th July 1st. Uh, I don't know why that keeps popping up. Uh, I think my network has, has, has some, somehow messed up my chat bot right now. So I don't know, that, that, that wasn't supposed to happen. So let me try this again. Time to tell you, they say that your, your system knows when you're trying to present something. I'm, tell, I'm when... telling you, I'm telling you, and this has never happened. So, okay, let's just go to field registration form. I'll, I'll try the other option later. So, here, here is the link. So, when, once you do that, it will direct you to the form, which, if you may not already showed us earlier, how that works. So, once you click start now, when we attend the event, so Let's say on Monday, um, what is your full name? Michael Kano. Um, where's your current location? Lagos. Um, what is your private language? Let me say Igbo. Please impute your mobile number. So I'll just do that quickly. And then email address. Let me put in my develop our account so that we just use that and, and see how, how that works. You can use any email, by the way, any email works, Gmail, anything works. So once you do that, that should redirect you to, yep, the email just came in. So let me just, That's uh, it's, okay. That's the email, so you can see the analytics event. Uh, yep, that's email. Hello, Michael. Can you successfully complete the registration? What can I start on? Can you find below your registration? Best regards. And you can see registration details, date of attendance, full name, location, language, email number, and then you can. Go to the website or message your HR department as the case may be. And this is just a chatbot. You know, I've done so many things besides chatbots, application, automated processes. I'm sure my colleague Norman, who created an amazing application, is willing to share. So let me just hand over to him right away. Thank you so much for that, Michael. What an amazing chatbot. Um, chatbot. Uh, before you go, I would like to confirm um, something. Uh, did you code? while creating that? Was there any sort of coding while you created the chatbot? There was no single coding. There was no single coding. So all you literally start, created... I, I, yeah. I wish I, I could just show you. It, it, you know, it's it just a very simple process, you know? Give it topics and then give it triggers and then, you know, you're good to go. This is just like it's a chat GPT now, you know? <laughs> it's a it, 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 baby chat GPT as, as the case may be, you know? That's how ChatGPT was created. You know, this same process, this same knowledge. So, so I, I, again, I would like to say this. Thanks to the analytics for, for this opportunity because I'm, I'm an analyst. I mean, I, I'm a developer. 
I feel like a god sometimes, you know, when I'm, I'm able to analyze data and also create applications that can, you know, solve some of the problems. So I'm, I'm still learning, but so far, I feel like a god, uh, you know, like a super, like, like a superhuman, <laughs> basically. So thanks, uh, thanks, thanks to you guys for this opportunity. Thank you, thank you so much, Michael. Thank you so much, Michael. Okay, uh, so we still have someone else uh, 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 that's you know going to show us what he has worked on. Uh, Norman, please can you turn on your video so we can spotlight you. Can you confirm your there, Norman? Norman, are you there? Norman? Norman, Norman, Norman. Norman, you're muted, so we can't get to you. We can't get to hear from you. So I'm asking to unmute yourself, so that should also get you started. Norman. OK. Uh, so while we wait for Norman, let me just have this opportunity to get some questions and answer done. All right, so if you have any questions, you can raise up your hand and I'll be happy to take your question. Michael, thanks a lot for that fantastic presentation. Thanks for taking our time on a Sunday to share with you know, what you've done. Thank you very much. Really appreciate your big time, yeah? All right. So um, so if you have any questions regarding the training program, regarding the opportunities that you have, I'll be happy to take you on your questions, okay? And if there are no questions, I would just like to show you the platform where your classes are going to be arranged. Okay, so if I go to Google Classroom, every program, all your programs are, you know, stored in the Google Classroom. So I'm just going to walk you through what they're doing at the moment. So you see this, this is the program that started quarter 5, 2023. So that was in May, that was last month, because at the end of last month. And let's see what they're doing currently. So you see all the programs they've done so far, okay, are currently there. So you have Power Apps, you started with Power Apps, you see Power Apps, Power Apps. You have the presentation power automate and you know let's see what they've done so far with their power application so you see everything is project based okay i'm just going to play the video this is kingsley currently working with them this is the quotes that they are currently working you see this happened on the 4th of june okay that's last weekend all right so i'm also let me just show you another program that has you know gone on for a bit longer okay so power platform but this is the one that started in uh, on the third, which is March. Okay, so you see they're currently doing the capsule project. This is the one that lasts for two weeks. That would last for two weeks. Now let me give you a sample. Let me show you. This is an end to end. Like I said, the capsule project is going to be a project that contains everything together. All right, Norman, you're here now. I think I can hear you. Correct. Yes. Yes. All right, so just give me a second. Let me just walk you through some of the project. So you see, this is a loan request application that you're going to build. So the project objective is, the objective is this loan request application is to help digitize and process requested for loan in an organization. With the help of this application, users can easily request for loan from the comfort of their homes or offices. The system is also aimed at reducing paperwork, time consuming processes, errors, and difficulties in managing, you know, loan requests. So it's an end to end project that you've been working on. So you have one loan request. You also have what? Generated an automated PDF certificate. All right. So there are other kind of projects. You see projects that would you can easily showcase to potential recruiters that this is what you've worked on. So you can see this is a more detailed project. You see this program end to end. Everything that you need to do has been designed over there. All right. So let me just fast forward. Uh, you see, case needs one taking them through this particular session. This is Power App, all right? And you get to see exactly what they are building. Inter in it's an inventory system. So if you work, in, if you're working in logistics, okay, you have a bunch of manual process. So everybody has to send requisition form to you. You need to get, you know, you need to get requests from different suppliers. So rather than doing all those email, you know, email manual process of you. My dream piece, but just sending you different kinds of email. You can build an application that will be able to track those things, okay? More automated, easy to use, easy to deploy within the business. And that's exactly what we are doing. And you can see no coding. It's just you, you know, drag and drop and you doing all the things you need to do, all right? So it's an end-to-end -end 
to the people that you'll be working on, okay? That you'll be building within the within the organization itself. So this is just power apps, okay? And there's model-driven apps, there's canvas-driven apps that you see get to build and get to work on. So, you know, those are the things that you see. This one is Power BI, you can see the training program, you can see all the programs, you know, end to end, detailed out in the, in the, in the program itself. So, yeah, so that's it. Um, Norman, let me see. Okay, let me just take a few questions. Norman, I know you're... Okay, Norman, let me just allow you to present quickly, just in the next one, two minutes, because we don't have enough time anymore. Time is well spent. So, Norman, if you want to, you know, turn on your video so we can get to see you, that would be fantastic. Is that okay? Yeah, thank you. Oh, are you using your phone to present? Sorry. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, I hope my screen is visible. Yes, your phone is, is visible, yes. All right. Uh, thank you so much. So I will present a live uh, management uh, system. Uh, the background of the matter here is that uh, uh, we are dealing with a company uh, that is migrating from traditional uh, paper-based approaches where an employee fills in a request deposited with their manager. The manager sends it uh, to, to other lines of approval. And when the final approval is made, you know, the manager is notified, then they notify the employee like that in a traditional uh, setup. So we took advantage of uh, the, the power apps to present a, a seamless uh, solution that will solve uh, some of the burdens of that traditional uh, process. So in this kind of a process, the employee can also follow up every stage of the approval, see what is happening until the, the last uh, stage uh, without uh, the need to uh, make calls to anybody. So this is the interface. I've got the, the login screen here, uh, which I can log in. And immediately I log in, I will have an interface uh, here. So this is more, it's a home screen that tells uh, the user what the application is all about. So this is a live um, a request a system that is available to both employees, uh, line managers, uh, and as well as the HR. So what we have here are the types of leaves that are offered by the organization and you know the description for, for each type of leave. And across here, you'll be able to see the balances that uh, you have for each type of, of, of leave. And this applies to the currently logged in user. Uh, when you log on with a different profile, you will see different uh, information that uh, applies to you. So we have a menu here uh, for the navigation into the system where an employee can make uh, leave requests, can view the summary of all uh, uh, requests that they've made over a, a given period. They can also view their balances against each type of leave. Then there's also bio data and the leave approvals. So the system can allow approvals within the app or approvals can also be made automatically through emails or through Power Automate. And Across here, I've got the account uh, manager where you can log in, log, log out of the, of the system, all right? So uh, I'll quickly go through uh, some of the requests that, I, that have been made. So here you can make a new request to provide the dates uh, where you want uh, to go and leave, provide all the information, fill in the details of the managers and so forth. Also make attachments uh, if you have got a sick note or something just to add on to the application you are making. Then here we can view the request summaries. Uh, if you want all those that are approved, you can also filter and the system will show you the approvals that were, you know, were made over some period of time. 
which you want to see what was rejected over some time, uh, you also have an option for, for, for that. So yeah, th these are you know all the amazing things that uh, Power Automate can do, and you can navigate to a particular record just in case you want to see more details about it. Then again, you can see the balances. So let me just take you through another interface. This is only for managers who approve. So what, how the system works is that as an employee, I can be a line manager. So when I log in, I'll be able to see only those approvals uh, that are sent to me for my action. And I can search for a particular employee and I'll be able to see their records. I can also check uh, employee against a particular type of leave so that I will make an informed uh, decision. So let me just quickly uh, do that. All right. So you see uh, for that particular employee, Nomen Gongawa, and the balance that they have uh, for that particular type of, of leave. So this will help a manager to make uh, decisions in terms of the leave days that are available uh, against a particular employee. So I'll just quickly do a, 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 a request here so that uh, we can see how the automated uh, flow uh, works. Just entering arbitrary data. I'm putting in my details there so that uh, I'll be able to see the email. All right, then I make a submission. So these are some of uh, you know the success messages that I receive. Uh, when a record is submitted. So now let me just check uh, emails. Of course, because of internet, uh, the record might take a bit longer to, to appear in the Microsoft Outlook. Uh, but just to show you some previous uh, emails that were coming through so that I can approve them. So those were some of the kind of emails that are supposed to be coming through. Then uh, I also have the Power Automate. So through this Power Automate, I'll be able to see all the approvals that are coming to me and I can approve right through the Power Automate here on my uh, mobile gadget. In as much as I can also do the approvals uh, through my through my, my, my application itself. So this is how versatile the, the system is. Uh, just trying to refresh it today so that uh, we, we, we can see what I'm talking about. I've got a bit of uh, a slow connection. Yeah, so this is the, the new request that we just filled in that popped up there. You can see on the 11th uh, of June. So here it is, uh, requesting an approval or a, a, a rejection. So I can just say uh, reject. So once I, I do that, um, the, an email is also signed to, to the applicant so that they can see. All right, so we've got an email that came in there. Um, all right, so yeah, basically this is uh, all, I, all I have uh, to show you. And uh, coming back to my application now. Um, so they are the approvals, we can also see them. Uh, if I want to approve a particular record, I navigate to it and still I can also make those choices and approve 
byte within the application. So you can see how versatile the system is. And once I'm done, I can log out. So I'm signed out of the system. So thank you. I leave any comments or questions to you. Yeah. All right, fantastic, Norman. Thanks all. This is amazing. You're doing this all from the comfort of your phone. All right, so that's to tell you how dynamic uh, the applications that you're going to be building from the power apps you're going to be doing. Okay, so like I said, fantastic work, Norman. This is absolutely brilliant what you've done for us. And this is a, you know, you can also deploy it to the web, you know, mobile phones, your laptops, and all that. There are so many ways you can actually deploy this. So, Norman, take her. I'm uh, sorry, where are you joining from, Norman? I don't know. I'm from Botswana. Botswana, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for joining our session. So you see, um, thanks a lot for taking our time on a Sunday to to you know attend the session and also present to people that are also. I don't know. You joined the master class, did you? You joined the master class. How did you get to join our program? Well, uh, I I we actually met on Twitter. I saw the presentations that you guys did on Twitter. And okay. uh, I joined the, the, the master class and, and, and enrolled into the program. And, you know, it's, it's been fantastic. You guys are, are amazing. Amazing. I love that. Thanks a lot for taking our time again on a Sunday. I know everybody is looking for, everybody should be preparing for Monday. And uh, we're here to present to people. Thanks a lot, Norman. Really appreciate you taking our time. All right. So with the next five, 10 minutes, we're going to take questions and answer a round off. Please bear in mind that these sessions are, the, the program started, we have the early bed discount that is speci so specifically for early beds. And we're only looking out for the first 20 people to register. There are quite a number of opportunities you can get in from the training program. And some of them have listed it, you know, from the CV review, LinkedIn optimization and so on. So two installments, okay? So if you're paying into pounds, 300 pounds in two installments, 200 and 100 pounds. And if you're going to be paying in Naira, it is 270 pounds, and you can pay in two installments of 180 and 90,000 Naira. Now the second installment, the second installment comes one month into the program, one month. So you pay now, the next one is coming one month, you know, when you're already into the training program. So you have enough flexibility to save or get the money for the second. So you're not choked up to uh, make payments. All right. So let me just take uh, Mary. I'm not seeing if I'm correct with the pronunciation. Mary, I'm not sure. Do you want to ask your question? Yeah, thank you very much. Thank. I mean, thanks for the opportunity. And thanks for the time so far. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, I was, while I was here, even while in this uh, session, I had to call my husband and like sharing the, the amazing things I'm, <laughs> I was seeing at that time that come. Technology has really gone wired. And of course, I can't wait to have myself doing this, really. So I'm, I'm really excited. But I just want to know, you've answered a couple of questions I would have asked, but I would like to know, you mentioned initially that um, you are using the Excel database or something but what is it for example i put on put up all these um all these let me say all these um in terms of um the putting up the leaf tracking system the payroll system the power fable, on what uh, i might want as a business i might want to definitely have this um stored in a database maybe for a lot of years and being able to refer back to them so what's what is the ideal database that is being used or that you recommend Maybe that will also be discussed during the training. I just want to know. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, you're muted. Yeah. All right. So we have Dataverse. Okay. So Dataverse is part of one of the two. So if I go to Power BI, for example, now, uh, or if I even go to Microsoft itself, um, let me just see. All right, so get data from, you see here, you have Dataverse, okay? So this Dataverse is almost similar to a regular, it's the same thing as a database, all right? And that's what you know Microsoft is pushing currently in terms of you working with a database structure itself. So. You have database, you have Dataverse, like I said, and you have also SharePoint. 
So if I click on more, you'd see SharePoint also is one of the most, which also preferred in the real sense of it, where you can actually, um, so if I click on all, no file, sorry. So you'd see SharePoint folder, you would see if I even just search for SharePoint. All right, you see SharePoint folder, SharePoint online list, SharePoint list, so on and so forth. So this can also act as a source of data. This is also your data sources that you could also refer to. So you have Dataverse, you have SharePoint, all right? And you could also, you know, the data that you're getting from this can also be uploaded into a SQL server, all right? So the data you're getting can also be, so if, your, if your organization is using SQL server, so if you're using a SQL SQL server, in your organization, your data, the leave tracker and everything can also be updated into, so once somebody requests for a leave, it can actually be updated into a SQL server, all right, in which you can store to perpetuity. To, you can even store to a cloud platform. So if you go to data sources, you click on more, you can store to all that data sources, like, you know, um, let's say Azure data sources. So if you uh, Azure SQL database, you can store data to, um, Quite a number of other database structures, SQL Server, IBM DB2, Oracle Database, SAP HANA, you know, Google BigQuery, so on and so forth. So when that happens, how you're going to do that is the Excel file that has been updated can actually be used to update a database. So as somebody is requesting for a form and that Excel, that Excel file is updated, once that Excel file is updated, the database is also updated. So your data, your Excel is just going to be your analytical software for analytics and all that. But you can still even make it in the sense that you can connect Power BI to the database directly. Okay, so anyhow you want it, it's actually very dynamic and very interesting software you can actually build to a very large extent. So there are quite a number of data sources, not just Excel that you can work with. So you have mentioned Dataverse, I've mentioned SQL Server, I've mentioned SharePoint, I've mentioned you know. Um, any other database that you've cloud platforms, AWS, AWS, your S your S3 buckets, your any other database that you have within the organization can actually be used. So it's not rigid to say that you should usually excel. There are so many other database structures you can actually use. All right. So does that make sense? Very well. Thank you very much. So database like AWS also can fit in into Power BI. Uh yes, you can connect directly to Power BI using AWS, using your S3 buckets and all that. So okay. you get data from, sorry, more, and you have databases. Just give me a second, let to load databases. And you would have, let me just search for, okay, sorry. Sorry, where are you, sorry. So database, so we have, data sources, Amazon antenna, you have Amazon antenna. Let me just search for the keyword Amazon. Okay. So you have Amazon Redshift, you have Amazon antenna, and you have Amazon open search service. It's still in beta, so it's still in beta. So you can connect directly to Amazon Redshift for your data source also. So in terms of Azure, Azure obviously is Microsoft. You'll be able to connect to a lot of to Azure services. Okay, so you have Azure BigQuery, you have Google BigQuery, you have Azure SQL database. You have quite a number of Azure services that you can actually use as a data source. All right, and even Google also. So you have Google um, Google Cloud Platform, which is GCP, okay? So if you search for Google, all right, you can also use connect to Google BigQuery, Google BigQuery Azure, that's the Google Analytics, Google Sheets and all that. So all this can act as a data source, okay? in order for you to do analytics and also for you to build your applications, all right? Some of these are premium services. So you might need to pay extra, but essentially you can use it in any organization you find yourself. So I hope that answers your question. Very well, thank you so much. All right, fantastic. Thanks for that very smart, uh, very intuitive question. All right, uh, let me take Bami Daily. Bami Daily, Bami Daily. Bam Dilip, you're speaking. I can't hear you. Okay. Okay. Hello? Yes, I can, I can hear you now, yes. Yeah, you can hear me now. All right, thank you. Yes. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, 
thank you very much, Femina, for this. And um, I mean, it's, I think it's quite packed. Okay. Um, so uh, I, I'm I'm not so new to this platform. Uh, I think I know about this platform. So I, I mean, I'm always very uh, skeptical about things like this because I've, I've gotten myself burned. I mean, from a lot of people, you know, who comes and says you can do this, you can do these trainings. You make payments, you get into the class, and you realize that. I mean, they're teaching you two or hundred of what the entire platform is, right? And okay. at the end of the day, you are really un unable to do what you want to do. So I'm usually skeptical about learning. Personally, I've resolved to learning from YouTube and all of those things, right? So, and I think it's working. So um, so for me, uh, a, a quick question is, is, is there a possibility to select some of the stuff you want to learn? Because for instance, for me, I'm not new to Power BI. I use Power BI, so I really, um, I work with it, right? Um, and I have, I know a bit of power, um, power, power hubs. So actually what brought me into this, or what caught my attention with this is your power hubs and your power automate aspect of the training. So, uh, and sometimes when I get into class and it's, um, I'm learning, I'm starting to learn Power BI from basics, it sort of catches me off because I mean, I'm, I know more than those basics. So. I just want to know is there a way is there a, is there, is there a shredded plan or um how can i navigate so that when i get into the class i mean i don't get <laughs> caught up in the in the uh, in the middle you know all right so what do you use power bi for as uh, i'm Dele. i'm just quickly ask uh ask the question so what do you use power bi for currently okay um so currently i use power bi to do analysis um my current organization, I work as a center manager, and um, what I do is basically collect data through different uh, through multiple processes, different forms, uh, and then analyze that data at it. Uh, okay, so the yeah. same asking the question, Paul, yeah, you'll be able to answer, correct? Well, um, so I, <laughs> like I always say, some of this, well, no, no, of course, some of these platforms have extended functionality so okay. i believe that things change change every day so okay definitely obviously but if you ask so me, I, no, this is question, just just a basic basic, basic basic data okay, modeling question, data modeling question. Ahead, ahead. so do you know what's the difference between your facts and dimension table is it what the difference between your facts and dimension table all right so your dimension table is a table where that that so you know um, let me give you an example. Um, how do I explain this? So if you have like um, a table that they're using to create a measure or, the, okay. or that they're using to, um, okay, more like create a measure for a particular um, um, uh, yeah. Just a descriptive measure, basically. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So that, that will be your dimension table. Okay, <laughs> and the facts table, all right. So, anyways, um, one thing I like to tell most people is our training program is absolutely detailed in the sense that if I let me see if I can show you some of the testimony. I'm not sure if I put any testimonial here. Uh, there's a particular testimony I'm looking for. Yes. Okay. So, this particular test, this is someone that got a job in the UK. Now, uh, see, the agency asked, How soon can I start? Blah, blah, blah. I'm looking for a particular thing. She said, Good job. Uh, do you know and okay then i'll just drop an answer and i finish okay see exactly so um during my interview i was asked question about power bi we switched on data mode that's the founder of Teranetics. we work together and i was just dropping every answer asked and by the time i finished here i was asked if i will be willing to train the team if i will be willing to train the team so you see that's the key thing now, you learning on YouTube, you learning on Udemy, you learning on any other platform is absolutely different from you learning from somebody that's standing in front of you, telling you exactly what you need in the industry. Now, something as you know as fundamental as data modeling in Power BI is, fun, is fundamental. How you design your schema, your snowflakes, your star schema, your facts dimension tables, very essential. A lot of people say they know Power BI. And we get, I get to that question a lot. When I just did something else, I, I know Power BI. How, what do you know in Power BI? 
Do you know how many things you need to do? Let me go to Power BI service, for example. Okay, I go to Power BI service. Okay, sorry, I'm, I'm looking for that particular screen. All right, I'm just trying to make it as dated as possible. Um, sorry, where's my screen? Everything has happened in my face now. But essentially, what I'm telling, what I'm saying is that there are so many things you can actually do. So many things. How you create your your what it is your data flows. So you come here. How to work with reports, page data reports, core card, database, data flows, streaming data set, so many things you can actually do. So if you're saying that you know Power BI, it's like you can't know 100% of Power BI, trust me. And that's where we come in to teach you as much as possible so that when you eat, when you get into the place, you're not just learning Power BI as a standalone tool, you're learning Power Platform together, how everything integrates. Do you know you can use Power to meet your Power BI? Let me show you. Yeah. All right. So if you come here that you see this power to mate for Power BI, it's literally there. And people really don't know how to do see how your data, set up the flow, apply, share, format the button, and all those things. You can actually use Power Automate within Power BI. So there are quite a number of things that you can actually do in Power BI, but trust me, you've been learning and you'll be when you finish the learning process, you'll be asked during the recruitment process, will you be willing to train the team? All right, because of how verse <laughs> your knowledge would be. That's where we come in. It's not just we just teaching you fundamentals. And that's where we have a lot of people giving testimonials, giving things. These are all testimonials from people that have gone to our training program, you know, posting on LinkedIn. The links are there for you to click on, for you to view. You can chat up with them. Your names are there for you to chat up with them. They're all different people, ladies, guys across the world. All right. So these are the things that you will learn. So when I, I know people are eager to say that, oh, I know this particular thing, can I do something else? But trust me, what you know is something like, you know, it's good, it's a good quantity, definitely. I, I resonate with it. But trust me, what we do in our training program is way more detailed than what you are got anywhere else. I can beat my chest, okay? And that's why we get recognitions from majority of these new platforms and everywhere. Um, you know, that's why we have a very good, high percentage in terms of people getting jobs going through our training programs. So trust me, bro, uh, Ben Billy, trust me, you will be getting yeah. more than you might gain for. I can tell you that, okay? So, okay. Uh, yeah. um, okay, okay. Thank All you, right. um, and and I look forward to that. I, I, I okay. mean, I, I look forward to that, that um, I'm able yeah. to get. Much more than you, you get way more, way more than you budgeted. Trust me, you get way more than you actually budgeted for. All right. Okay. So it's not just the technical side of things. We have the soft skill side of things where you get your CV reviewed, link optimized, upwork, navigating the job market. There's so many things apart from just the technical side of things. So trust me, there's a lot more for you to from, from what you're getting from the training program. Okay. All right, thanks a lot for that very good question. I'm very sure some, some other people are in this same situation. So thanks a lot for that asking that question. Um, Ruben, I'm going to take your question and I think that will be the last question for today. Then we can call it a day. All right, Gideon, let me ask you to mute yourself. So, sorry, I think I muted you back again. Gideon, sorry, you may need to unmute yourself. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, I can hear you now. I can hear you perfectly, yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, some of us are fresh in this data analytics uh, program. Mm -hmm. uh, my question is, I'm coming from an area, a different industry, or I'm even coming from an industry where they don't apply this system at all. But I want to learn it. Uh, how is it going to help me uh, get a new place to work? after I have learned it, once I don't apply it in the current organization where I work. All right, even within your current organization, you can start to deploy it. So yeah. I've worked with participants in the training program that have gone ahead to start deploying within the organization, all right? And they've got a promotion within the same organization where they work because majority of organizations don't know what they need until you provide those solutions to them. All right. Okay. So this particular one was it works with a furniture furniture company back in Nigeria, okay, and they used to get a lot of requisitions from different suppliers. So okay. person supplying wood, different people come around to say that oh they have the best price for wood, the best price for snail, the best price for this design, and all that. 
And what we did was to work with him to build an application within the organization that, you know, anybody, that any supplier coming in will be able to just, rather than them bring in requisition, it can actually just put the codes on the application, attach the invoice, okay? If you notice, everybody had like that book for them to attach documents and all that. So, you know, everything was automated and that was promoted just because of that initiative, single initiative, that the organization never even thought they could actually do. So these are the things that you'll be able to learn and be able to deploy, even in your current organization. And if you're looking for, you know, other remote opportunities, we also will do that for you, where we provide, you know, how to navigate the job market. And that's what we do, navigating the job market. You know, apply for remote roads in the UK, in Canada, in the US, and all these things. Or we'll show you how to apply for these roles, show you the places you can apply for these roles, also tell you the kinds of roles you can apply for. Now, let me just show you quickly, okay, um, the kind of roles you can apply, because we we have like a, I'm just going to show you real quick, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to do jobs we can apply for. So so we have Power Platform, okay? okay. I'm just going to show you what we tell our participants. So if you go to our training programs, you can, you can start, you'll put this as a work experience, okay? And you see, these are some of the roles you can apply for. Power Platform Developer, Business Intelligence Developer, Power BI Developer, Power Apps Developer, Data Analyst, Technical Consultant, Systems Analyst, Data Visualization Designer. So quite a number of roles you can actually apply for if you go through the training program. So it's not just Power Platform Developer you can apply for. Okay, you can apply for okay. quite a number of other roles, you know, putting across different industries and so on and so forth. So, you know, the training program is actually very detailed to get you started in Power Platform. Okay. okay. All right. Thanks a lot. My Gideon. question is answered. Okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks. I really, I really Thank enjoyed you. the questions I had from you today. Thanks a lot Thank for taking you. our time. I appreciate God bless it. You. Thank you. You too. Yeah. All right. Um. Thanks a lot, guys. Um. I think this is where we're going to draw the curtains today. All right. Uh. Let me just I'm I'm sure you have one last question. I'm sure. Okay. So, Francis, people are asking questions now. Last minute. <laughs> Pam Dylan, please go ahead quickly. Okay. Um, Jimena, can you hear me? Okay, someone said, I'm um, okay. Um, Ashaka, Ashaka, could you unmute yourself, please? Um, Ashaka Mutuni, sorry. Okay. But somebody, can one of our me? people, I can hear you, yes. Okay, good. I just want to ask, I mean, can I get like a one on one with you, uh, Femena? Oh, yes, yeah, sure. Are you on any of the uh, WhatsApp group? Uh, yeah, I'm on, um, yeah, I think uh, the analytics, the announcement yeah. group or something like that. Okay, yes, please just send a message to any of the admins. Just request that you want like to speak with me and I'll be happy to talk to you. Is that okay? Okay, that's fine. All right. Just All ask right. any of the admin, just tell them you want to speak with Ife Mena and they'll send you my number and I'll get to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. All right? All right, okay, cheers. Thank you. Thank All you right. very much. Um, Ashaka, let me ask you to meet yourself. You said you are our participant, so let me see. Can you hear me? Uh, Sunday, your voice, we can't hear you. We can't hear you, Sunday. I think there's a microphone issue somewhere. So if you could just change your microphone so we can hear you. I would actually love to, because you said I have a testimony too from Tenanitic. Yes, so. can you hear me now? I can hear you now, Ashaka. Where are you, where are you tuning in from? Where are you calling from, sorry? Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough, all right, yeah. thanks a lot, yeah. Yes, I actually just want to encourage people, though I, I, I actually want to do some other courses. I um, actually just want to encourage people because I was uh, part of the last set. I won't say this immediate past one, but the one that they we, we, we did, the combined one of uh, master data analyst, the one for Excel, Power BI, and, and SQL. SQL. And I, I, can, I can give you an... Uh, uh, and um, a testimony that there were some of my friends that studied data science and the rest of them. And uh, when we were uh, searching for jobs, though I've not gotten my desired job yet because I'm looking for a job that needs, uh, that was going to give me sponsorship together. Yes. But uh, they, they, when we said, okay, let's have tutorials together. The first day I started tutorials with them that I took them on Excel, those that went to school to study data science, they said, no, I am the one to take all the classes. That I said, but you people studied this thing. They said, no, 
that these things that they studied in class was just theory, but these things you know are really practical. And sincerely, I'm really happy about that. And even my business in Nigeria now uh, is uh, because I have been a business in Nigeria with Excel, I'm using to balance the sheet and everything. And even my staff I will say, ah, okay, how are you doing this all this time? Just say, don't worry, just does. You can just write all the analysis for me. I'm going to type it and do all the calculation and they will see it right. And it's really, really helping my business. And in here also, that's really helped me a lot. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's fantastic. You know, to adding value to people. <laughs> so we added value to him, adding value to other people. So that's what we do, okay, with what we call uh, um, Sunday. Thanks a lot for taking our time to give your uh, testimony. I appreciate that big time. Time. All right, so I'm just going to, I think Francis, Samson, and the last questions I'm going to take. Um, Francis, do you want to quickly unmute yourself? Unmute yourself and uh, I'll call it today. We just have what, 33 people left on the call. So Francis, yes, go ahead, please. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Thanks, Ephemina. I appreciate you. Um, thank you for the beautiful session. It's been a productive one for me, if I must say. Okay, um, I'm actually interested in this. Um, I think what caught my attention was the power apps, if I must say. Um, but I was asking um, on the chat box that um, if there are other sessions outside um, July 1st, and I know someone tried answering, but um, given the fact that um, I've stayed to the end of the program and I know that um, already there are discounts available you know, to mm -hmm. people, um, the first 20 participants. So I just wanted to reconfirm if I would be um, privy to these discounts, say in two or three months' time, I'll be available mm -hmm. to have this um, session. I'm actually working on a project currently, so I'm sure I will not be able to dedicate um, my time for this if I start with the July 1st court. So I just wanted to confirm, since there will be um, there are all these new courts on every first of every month. Would the discount be available at that point in time for me? Um, so in terms of discounts, we run any bad discounts. Um, but now I can't I can't categorically say this is going to be the situation. Now, the cost for this training program at the start of the year was not even, it wasn't these amounts. It was something else entirely. All right. So based on demand based on you know the additional benefits we're adding to the training program there are so many things that we are adding to the training program that we keep improving on every time so in terms of early bird discounts you know being guaranteed for next month we run this training program every month guarantee we run it every single month now the only thing i cannot guarantee just yet is the early bird discounts because this is actually this is only available for one week okay so if you're looking to register now, please make payments, register for the power platform, and we can get started, okay? All right, so um, Francis, I hope you understand, but well, we can't give any guarantees on the discounts for now, okay? Thanks a lot for that question. Uh, I think that's just about it. I know Simon has a question. Michael says he wants to show us, uh, to show an app for the organization. Um, I don't know if we have time to go through that. Okay. Uh, I know uh, Michael. Michael says he has something to show us. So which of the Michael? Michael and Michael Kanu, correct? Yes. Yes, sir. Michael Kanu. Okay. Because so, someone was asking earlier if they can currently use this at work. So I currently use uh, this application at work. You know, I'm currently in research and development, quality assurance department. Okay. I use this to track some of the items that are we test for quality control. So let me just quickly show you. I'm, I'm really not going to take much of the time. So this is it. Can you see my screen now? Yes, it's coming up, yes. Okay, so this is basically the application, not nothing so serious. So uh, um, let me just quickly log in here so you see. Uh, let me do this. If, if you log in, because this is the field login. This is something that also, I learned here, right? and you can see this entered a new sample, which is tied to the supplier, the sample quantity, the LPU number, the date supply, the date received, date analyzed, the section is passed, or field or pending, and analyze stakeholders. Because once I submit, 
stakeholders get this as well. And of course, any attachment to processor means, you know, this happens and you can view the details of the sample. So I currently use this at work. You know, I, I currently use this at work and it's working. My stakeholders and managers, they, they, you know, I submit, they, they get a copy of this report immediately and you can see. So this is very um, feasible and, and, and very, um, how hard I put it down? It's deployed. It's applicable. <laughs> it's applicable. It's easy to use. It's applicable. And it's something that you learn in, in a short time. Trust me. I, I, I have tried learning on other platforms, but analytics, one thing I will upload analytics for is it is the practical section. You know, they 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 draw your hands, they they, they, they take you from 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 the level of a newbie, and then before you know it, you are doing things that you you'll be shocked about. So a, anyone trying to do this, please do not hesitate. I'm not just saying this because. So I think I paid me nothing, you know. I I, I would say potentially have, have empowered me instead. So don't hesitate. Now is the time to start, you know, because once you start now and, and you give yourself six months to a year, trust me, you'll be doing more than I'm doing and you'll be very, very relevant in your piece of work. I used to be a small boy in my office, but now I the role is still in that. So that's just it. You know, that's just it. So you guys, thanks, thanks again, the analytics. I'll, I'll give you guys double thumbs up. Thanks, thanks for it. Yeah. Really happy for you. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's fantastic. Thanks a lot, Michael. Thanks a lot for that. Um, Michael is taking out his Saturday, Sunday, honestly speaking, to speak to us. So thanks a lot, Michael. That's absolutely fantastic. Um, Samson, I would like to take your question. I'm not sure if I have enough time. Just very briefly. Sorry, I know everyone is tired to go, uh, but I just, I just want to be sure I answer everyone's question so i saw someone is asking for the whatsapp group please drop okay. the link in the whatsapp group so that they can join the whatsapp group yeah, yeah of something uh Simona, good evening uh, thank you for thank you for the presentation i was on one of your i was on your call yesterday okay. or a, a different one and today as well so um i am currently a phd student taking energy and environment and um, the presentation of yesterday i was able to see um, a lot of application to what I'm doing and how it can be very helpful to my thesis, aside even getting an additional career path or transitioning into a new career. So yes. there are certain concerns I have. Possibly, maybe I would like to have a chat with you. I'm on one of the WhatsApp group. Mm -hmm. I'll just find a way to talk to you, possibly we can talk okay. more about Oh, yeah, 100%. I'm happy to speak with you um, anytime. So don't worry, I will fix the time. Okay, just send a message to any of the admins. Request that you want to speak with if you men are, and I will be, you know, I will we'll schedule a call. Okay, just send me a message. Once they send you my number, send me a message. We'll schedule a call during the week. Uh, we can work something out together. Okay. okay. Does that mean is that okay? Much. So just yes. ensure that you're yeah. ensure that you're on the WhatsApp group so that you can easily send a message to the admin, any of the admin. You might be lucky to even send me directly. I'm an admin on a platform, but I just said any admin. So that's, okay. you know, yeah. So you might be lucky to send me my message directly and I will answer you. All right, um, something, and any other, any other person looking for a one-on-one -on -one session, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm happy to have that call with you. So thank you very much, guys. I know you've, I think we've taken longer than expected. I uh, appreciate you, to, you know, staying with us to the very end and um, looking forward to seeing how we can work together, okay? So much opportunities. There are so many opportunities in tech. Uh, it's not just data analytics, it's not just data science, there is also power platform. And I've showed you job that I like to show people to say this is what you will get. Now this is available. All right. It's just you that don't have the skills to take this role. Now this one, no coding, no mathematics, no statistics, nothing. You're just doing everything, drag and drop. And you're building automated systems, you're building applications and so on for the business. So I'll be looking forward to working with you guys individually to get you started in Power Platform. All right. Thank you very much and have a wonderful evening. I hope you enjoyed yourself. If you enjoyed yourself, put a yes in the chat and let's call it a day. So if you enjoyed yourself today, put a yes in the chats. Let's <laughs> so let me see the people that enjoyed the session today. All right. All right, fantastic. Yes, wonderful, wonderful. Thanks a lot for that. Appreciate you guys so much for taking our time on a Sunday. Really love you guys. Love you guys. Have a wonderful week ahead. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone.